Well, I bought bagels, but I only bought cinnamon raisin and plain. Yeah. And Sal like came in and he's like, "What the fuck? Who doesn't buy everything bagel?" And I go, "Why the fuck would I've done that?" And he goes, "It's the best bagel." It's and not. I go, "No, it's not. Cinnamon raisin is." And we started fucking screaming at each other. It's again. egg, but go ahead. <sighs> it's egg or cheese, but go ahead. Egg. <laughs> Egg. Egg. <laughs> I've never even seen someone order that one. <laughs> it's the one that's always empty? No, it's not. Baba. It's the one that's always egg? full. Egg or cheese? Because you get a bagel and put an egg on it. Nah, dude. Egg bagel. Egg, the, the yellow egg bagel or the cheese bagel. Let is me tell the, you something. If you say, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You lost weight and you, you used to be beautiful. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about anymore with food. Egg. You, Bagel you have, is the best. You have said shit to me in the last year about food since you lost weight, where I'm just like, he's lost his edge. This is like when Miles Davis stopped doing heroin and the, the music sucked. You've lost your fucking edge. What are you talking about? I lost my, Egg bagel. I lost my fat edge? Yes. <laughs> The life of a stand-up comedian is crazy. You're going nonstop. You're staying up until dawn. You're dreaming about comedy. And then you wake up thinking about comedy. But running yourself into the ground will never work. It doesn't. You need to make sure you're getting a good night's sleep when you can. And that goes for anybody, not just comics. That's where Ghost Bed can help. Ghost Bed mattresses are designed with a premium materials and patented cooling features so you sleep better cooler and more comfortable from the moment your fat head hits the pillow. So take advantage of free shipping, 101 night mattress sleep trial and financing starting at 35 bucks a month. Most orders ship within 24 hours. So you can start sleeping better this week. Listeners get 40% off all products site-wide. You get 40% off a mattress, adjustable base, and bedding accessories, or 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code YKWD at ghostbed.com slash YKWD for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. This show is sponsored by ShipStation. I mean, we live in this automated world. You know, but some things still require some uh, tedious manual work. I'm telling you right now, ShipStation is the best. ShipStation makes it easy to automate shipping tasks for orders from every marketplace in one dashboard. Get 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use promo code to try ShipStation free for two months. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use promo code YKWD and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code YKWD. Yeah, baby, we're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude, live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKWD. I started the social media podcast. <laughs> the fact. The YKWD podcast. YKWD's back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started. Before them all, YKWD. YKWD. This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. Uh, what's up, everybody? We're back. I'm back. We're live. I'm above the Comedy Cellar, world famous at the Comedy Cellar Podcast Studios, YKWD Studios. Uh, I'm excited. I'm back from the woods. I'm back in the city. I'm wearing my Roly. Woo, baby. Uh, I want to, out of the gate, I want to say thank you to my man right here. Right here, baby. Look at that. Where are we? Where are we? Right there. Look at that. How cool is that? Did JT make that? Sam the Hawk Toys, baby. Oh, I thought JT Custom Toys made No. JT's Stop my man. saying that. Well, JT's is my a, man, and he makes Sam custom. Sam the Hawk clothes. is the man. JT made the action figure. Okay, well, Sam made mine. It's not about you right now. All right. It's about Sam the Hawk. Look at that. Very nice. It's all. Look at that. Isn't that cool? 
Yeah, it's very, very nice. It's nice, Oh, man. look at that. That really does look like you. Except, Isn't it? except for the body. But the... Uh... You're a piece of shit. <laughs> this is the new Bobby. I know. It looks really good. It, I, and you honestly... Know, you know what? It looks... I, you being nice is worse. I'm being just, serious. You're not. I'm being very you're serious. Not. It's very good. You immediately went for the one thing that when I looked at it, I was like, wow, I'm really shredded. You went there. And I'm wearing my true classic jeans and my true classic hoodie and my true classic t-shirt. Uh-huh. Thank you, true classic. It's very good. This is all true classic. Zoom in on that. You can't zoom. What am I asking these guys to zoom for? I'm very excited about that. That's it's very awesome. good. Nice Sam work, Sam. I mean, it's great. Sam the Hawk, you're the best. Thank you. All right, we're back. I'm so excited to be back, and I'm so excited this is my first guest. One of my oldest friends in the business. Um, we've done a lot together. We started this podcast together. And then he bailed and left me and put all his eggs in Billy Bird basket and fucking. And then he bailed and left me. And Billy Bird <laughs> cut a hole in that basket and let all those eggs fall out. <laughs> I really did just fall right out as he was skipping through the woods with I'm, a picnic basket. I mean, he really. He's like, why is this bag so heavy? Oh, Joe's in it. Sunk, you, cut it, you, and you went floop and you fell out. Oh, that's funny. Billy. Yeah, you got to go, dude. It's too heavy. You're too heavy, dude. <laughs> I don't need your negative shit. I'm trying to have a picnic. <laughs> Look at you squinting fucking eye. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm okay, man. I'm going to... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I listen. Oh, no. I don't honestly... I, still... I know what's happening, Joe. Mm. I... Oh, God. I know you, Joe. You do. I do. <laughs> I know you. I fucking know you. <laughs> I. What's up, Joe? What's up, dude? What's up, man? YKWJ, the new podcast. What's? Oh wait, you know what? I uh, fuck. I fucked it up. God damn it. What? I was. I, was, I. You said what's up, Joe? Yeah. And I went, what's up, dude? Because you always say what's up, dude. And then yeah. I forgot the podcast. The letter stood for you know what, dude. Yes. So I said Y K W J. Yeah. Thinking it meant what's up, Joe. And then remembered what the letter stood for. It's a long way around the bend. Wow. And you said I, J, not Joe. J for the letter, like oh. the initial. Oh yeah. There's no J. No, no. I know. I'm. What's up, dude? What's going on with you, dude? <laughs> What's I did honestly. I was I was in the Uber on my way over, and I started to feel a little like, ugh. But I think it's just I haven't oh, really drank enough water today. A little what? A little like wonky, like a little like ah, um, am I a little? Well, it's hot out. Out of sorts. It's ninety degrees. That's what out. I'm saying. I think I'm. I, th- I didn't drink enough water today. I, Buddy, think I just feel it's like shit. Ninety degrees out. It's fucking crazy outside. I never drink enough water. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Part of my problem. I can tell. Uh, what do you want to know? What's going on? I don't know. There's something up with you, dude. There's I just, something up with you. Yeah, I'm extraordinarily uh, stressed out, and I'm just, you know, I'm trying not to think about it. What I'm you, only. Why? Why I'm, the fuck are you stressed out? Well, you got a fucking hit podcast. You got a sub restaurant. Your dreams. You live in the East Village, like you've always dreamed of. Your little fucking alt comic since you moved here. You've always wanted to. What a uh, dick. Dude, one day I want to live on a ABC Street. So do you. I your fucking fake, your fake old Motley Crue I shirt. I hate the East Village. I don't live in the East. Wherever Village. the fuck you live, All Alphabet right. City. What, what's what you? I'm you? a I'm a Hell's Kitchen boy. I was too. You were, but you You're dreamed n- of fucking ABCville. I did not. I stood by Hell's Kitchen till the day I left. I only left because my mom got sick. Thanks for bringing it up. She okay? <laughs> yeah, now she is. Oh, well, there you go. But no, that's the only reason I moved out of Hell's Kitchen was because my mom got cancer at the time, and I moved home. Well, how am I gonna fuck to help fuck her out? With you now? You shouldn't. I'm not gonna. It now. was a nice thing that I did. I mean, I'd like to. I have a couple of <laughs> zingers that I'd like to throw <laughs> down your way, but I'm not gonna. Did I ever tell you about the time? This is a true, a hundred percent true story. <laughs> Please let this. If be. he dies, <laughs> if when when Keith Robinson dies? Okay. Yeah, wait a minute. Let's take a. <laughs> I say before next year. I gotta tell this story. <laughs> I will tell this at his funeral if it kills me. Okay. But I, I can I tell you, I told you I said to him, yeah, yeah, when you die, you're gonna give away canes like Patrice <laughs> gave away hats. And I bet he laughed like you were fucking Ah <laughs> that's a good idea, player. Uh I scratched my face, my face is a little bleedy. Uh, yeah, it's okay. They didn't anyway. Um well I just if I'm patting. Yeah. Uh anyway, uh I um 
You know, you didn't. Just I was come, driving. You're not fresh from a dead. Are you a? <laughs> <laughs> I, I scratched my face. Yeah, that guy was stronger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Psh, psh. Anyway, uh, can't get in trouble for gay. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Those jokes fly. Psh, psh, gay. Dead. <laughs> I found a gay. Dead. Psh, psh. <laughs> so, uh, Keith calls me one day. Uh. Every word of this story is true. Everything I say and everything. First of all, when you know Keith's calling you, it's bad. He calls me, right? And he had been calling me, but my aunt had died. Oh, boy. And he called me a couple times, but I was at my family. You know, I was with my family in Jersey. I'm, like, helping do the prep for the funeral, all that shit. Oh, man. I'm in. I'm not kidding. I'm in the fucking funeral procession, driving from the church to the cemetery. You got the headlights on? No, during the day. Okay. I don't remember, but yeah. But it's that thing. I mean, It's the just, parade thing. You could just say, yeah, nobody's sure. going to check. I, I, I was trying to make the story better. Trying to this add. is a great story. I, I, don't slow it down. I this will not. The bonfire. Uh, oh! <laughs> we, don't have to act, we have to do act-outs every three minutes because we're going to oh! go two hours every day. First of all, day. I don't either. <laughs> that was the old bonfire. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all right. Psh, psh, gay uh, so... We're in the we're in the literal of the procession. Yeah. He, my phone rings. It's him. I'm like this motherfucker. He just keeps calling me. Yeah. <laughs> he must need something. Yeah. So I pick up the phone and I go hello and he goes fuck you, you know, <laughs> motherfucker. When I call you, you call me the fuck back. God damn it! I call you three times last three days. You call me the fuck back, you cocksucker. And I go oh yeah, Keith. You know why I didn't call you back? Because my fucking aunt died, and I'm literally <laughs> driving to the cemetery to bury her right now. And he just goes, eh, your aunt always bugged me. <laughs> He's fucking hands down the champion. He's the god. He's the champion. Keith is the god. Watch, he won't answer. He's probably napping. He might be downstairs. He's not downstairs. He might be doing his hour. He's not doing his hour. He only does, he has an energy once a week to do that. <sighs> well, it's Tuesday. He usually does it like on Tuesday or third or he's Monday. not. Uh, you know what bugs me? Wait, what the? It is up. Tuesday, right? He has no friends. Nobody likes him. He, 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 when I call, he should answer. He's, Fuck he's you. got, he, you, you are right. He has nobody. He's got nobody. Me, you, Dante. That's yeah, it. And Marina. For some reason. Marina doesn't like him. Marina doesn't like anybody. Rachel puts up with Keith. Marina puts up with Keith. Rachel puts up with Keith because she still needs a Amy black was, friend. Amy was out the door, and then he had a stroke, and she was like, ah, uh, fuck. I know. <laughs> little Kev was like, little Kev, when he had the stroke, was like, this is my chance. This is my chance to get out. I, only, I wake up at 5 in the morning with healthy people. <laughs> oh, my God. He really is a piece of shit. Yeah, he's but he's but he's the king. The fucking king, man. He's the funniest of the motherfuckers. He's the king. God damn it. And his new hour. How is it? I haven't seen it yet. Dude, it makes me sick. That it's that good? That he didn't have two strokes to be funny. <laughs> yeah. You I mean, he's he's at the top of his game right now. Not physically, but com <laughs> comedy wise. You know I mean, it takes him forty minutes to get up the stairs. But I mean, look, man. Keith was always a great comic. What? But, <laughs> but this is. I want to make sure I say this in the right way because I, I say this with great respect. I really do, and I'm you not going to get. You don't off. think black comics are as funny as white comics? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't you, trust them. I love that you said it with a Philly accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude. Um. No, I say this honestly with great reverence, and I'm not trying to, you know, get mushy or anything. But like, he. Like I learned wait, when I played music, I learned like limitations sometimes make you better. What do you right? mean by that? So you you would hear a record, you'd hear the first record by the band, mm -hmm. and somebody would go, "Have you heard this record? Holy shit, it's crazy! Nobody's this new band, they're underground, whatever." And they'd be like, "They, they recorded this on a they recorded this whole thing on a four track in their garage." And you're like, "What? Right? This is so fucking creative. This is incredible. They did it also on a four track." And then two albums later, they're signed to the major label, and they have all the 
all the accessibility to everything. Yeah. And the album sucks. It's too polished. It's too this. It's too that. You're saying with all his appendages working, not as funny. Well, I'm. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, I'm saying. I'm saying. He's, now he's a two track instead I'm of saying a four track. You're a, you, when you're a great, a talented, funny guy. Yeah. And then the world all of a sudden goes. You can't do anything just except put it out right like that. Mm -hmm. You can't jump around. You yeah. there are no shortcuts. It has to work funny. like this. And yeah. you're going to fight through a speech impediment from the yeah. stroke. Sure. It's like th those limitations probably are bringing like the the highest caliber of material out of I here. think so. I mean when I you broke I mean? my knee and uh, torgasm there and I had to come back, I had to work months with no energy. No physicality. Right. I had to sit or stand and deliver. Right. And it really cut all the fat out of my jokes. <laughs> you knew it was funny. You started laughing before I did. I'm and not that's laughing. That's why I started laughing. I'm not laughing. This is why. This is why. This is why. Inherently, you're just a bad person. <laughs> By the way, there were two things before that I didn't laugh at. <laughs> like what? That you compared hurting your knee to a man that has had two life-threatening strokes. <laughs> right. I, threw a, <laughs> I put an ACL up against a stroke. <laughs> I almost died twice. I mean, uh -huh. that you compared touring with Jay Davis <laughs> to this man having a fucking stroke. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I really did. I'm a piece of shit. No, no. But I hear you. It My takes. Point, yeah, it takes. It took. It, it really exposed. Yes. The shit that I was muscling in. Yeah. With a fucking movement or whatever. Well, look at those. <clears throat> Excuse the me. The only person that, and I'll say this, and I'm not. Look, say what you want. The only person that had movement that would enhance the joke, Dane. 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 Dane literally was like. Like a ballet dancer or something. Well, his his physicality was, was wild. Was part of yeah. his voice. Yeah, it you know? was wild. Yeah, uh, and how many people copied it? Oh yeah, L ass out, ass out stance. Yeah, <laughs> on the uh, monitor stance. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's like the uh, the uh, oh oh the finger point uh, up. But the but it was a uh, yeah. You know, it was never just this. It was. He, I went up to the elevator. Yeah. It was up there. He, you know what, Dan, know what Dane reminds me of? Yeah. Um, I read David Lee Roth's autobiography. And seriously, David Lee Roth. I thought you were going to say Louis C.K. No. <laughs> 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 ah, shit. Ah. If I had any fucking wit. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> God. Now, if, if I, I, David Lee Roth said in his autobiography, he, he talked about how he actually took. <laughs> uh, like gymnastics lessons or something. Hang on one sec. I want to just. Can you find me something heavy to smash somebody in the head with? Go ahead. Why? Because you read David Lee Ross. It's a great biography. No, no, it's a great autobiography. I just. It, it's an. Uh, I, I. It is a I, rock star's life all yeah. the way through. All right. Without any of the sad shit. Really? He's, yeah. Oh, he doesn't put the sad shit in. No, dude. Oh, he's just, like. He's like. He's like. Anyway, I had sex with two strippers last night on a pile of their earnings. Mama, <laughs> rock and roll is great. It's like, <laughs> like, that's every story. He used to hang out at the cellar because he did for a while. Yeah. Because he lived above Dove Davidoff. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so his his name's Roth. Never put that together. Jewish. Yeah. His uncle owned the comedy cellar. Manny? Manny, Manny Roth. Not our Manny. The other Manny Roth. I never, I that, never knew the, the, I never knew your Manny because he passed but when, right when I moved okay. here, and I never. So knew the, the other, other Manny. Roth was his uncle, so he was sure. coming down here back in the day. His family was all about the street, so he's coming through the. I'm out front talking to this guy. I'm like, oh my fucking god, I am talking to David. Lee Roth. He was hanging out every night at the cellar. I'm on stage, killing it. David Lee Roth walks through the crowd, and I and he goes into the bathroom. As he's coming out, I go, Dave, David Lee Roth, everybody. And he goes, hey, that Coke smile. <laughs> yeah, and I go, yeah. what's the most girls you've ever slept with in one? Five. <laughs> Before I got one night, he went That's five. Great. And he walked out of the crowd. And did he everybody did a cheer? Coke. Oh, dude. So, great. so David Lee Roth mm -hmm. was already an exceptional vocalist. And then he was like, no, I took like gymnastics. I forget. I think it was gymnastics. But he's like, I learned 
He goes, go do that shit. Learn how to do splits and all this shit. And, and I was like, oh. And I was like, that's what Dane did. I don't know if he took gymnastics, but I'm like, Dane took, hey, I'm already a great comic. I'm yeah. going to now practice this physical element that's going to add this whole other fucking layer well, to it. Well, Dane was a theater kid. I'm not And his, his first bits were pieces. They weren't, he, like, we were all doing comic, comedy, stand-up. You know, we were all talking about, Dane did pieces, like the, uh, I was raped by a snowman, the Terminator, where he had to do this whole thing. It was and a it, bit. And here's the thing. Would it just be like a monologue as the Terminator Well, it would or be like, I, you know, I just, like the Terminator. I just did the, what, I forget the bits. But it would be like uh, the Terminator, blah, blah, blah. And he would do the whole, all the shit. And, and here's the problem with those bits. If they don't work, you're out there hanging. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. he made sure they work. So his first things were all physical. And we mm. did the improv stuff together. We did the Al and the Monkeys where we did improv yeah. together. And we made it. The thing about him is, and I was the same way, competitive. Like, we did this whole thing at the end, this improv bit called Chorus of Gripes, where you get things that piss you off in the audience and everybody would get a thing and you'd have to be, be that person. Right? Chorus of gripes? Chorus of gripes. Oh, chorus. Chorus. Sorry. And the one person would lift you up like, all right, you go. So I give you, you know, whatever. It was an improv game where, you know, parking in New York City and I, he'd bring you up, the conductor. One guy would be the, Al would be the conductor. Bring you up, you know, parking in New York City, blah, blah, blah. And he'd shut you off. Then he'd bring me up. You know, dog shitting in the street. Dog, I hate when dog. And he'd, and he'd go up, bring you up and it was kind of an interesting thing. But whoever got the biggest laugh got a thing of water in your face. Got to throw it. The host would throw water in your face because at the end, he would just leave you up and shut everybody else off. Whoever the funniest, would he'd leave you up and you'd just go ah, and lose it and he'd throw water in your face. And you'd be like, oh shit, that was the end of the show. Thank you. Blah, okay, blah. I got you. There I'm go. telling you, man, that kid wanted that water in his face every night. At one point, I remember doing this thing. He, had, he was like down to his tidy whities crawling up the wall behind me to be the funniest. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was very competitive. Yeah. Some guys, <clears throat> uh, you know, we all feed off of it to a certain extent, but some guys really feed off of it, you know? Like, like Pete, you know, Pete Holmes is, is one of my very, very, very close friends. Yeah. And, like, and he's been since we started out together, basically, in New York. Yeah. We, I mean, we started where we started, and then when we got to New York, we were young here together. But um, Pete's like that. Like, Pete, like, the energy takes him to, like, a different level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we all feed off energy, but, like, I see him, like, he, he it's like a robotic almost, you know, like, like the robot gets plugged in all of a sudden, you know? Right. I'm always so scared of bombing because of the caliber of comic I came up with. <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm still petrified. Yeah. Like when I do that, I'm doing comics come home again. Nice. Um, and, you know, Dennis has That's a nerve wracking gig, dude. Dude. <sighs> I get nervous when you tell me you're doing it. Yeah. I get nervous thinking about when I did it. And it went great, but yeah. God damn, it was fucking scary, dude. It's one of the most nerve wracking gigs I do in my life in all year. And I always, they have me close a lot of the time. Sometimes they don't, thank God. But, a lot of times, you have me go at the end, and you're in front of 17,000 people, and they just saw Jimmy, Billy, Pete, Mulaney, Gulm, whoever the yeah, fuck. I mean, God it's like. damn, dude. It's like, and then the, don't forget Lenny, Dennis. Who's Jimmy? The band, Jimmy Fallon. Oh, Jesus Christ. So I like, thought you meant Norton. I was not, like, he's not from Boston. Oh, no, okay. they don't really have, I mean, they have anybody to do it, but it's like. Right. It, but that, that energy, that fuck, that thing where it's like. I'm not gonna fucking. I ain't bombing. I ain't fucking bombing. Makes me, you know, brings my thing to that level of where I don't give a fuck. Fuck, fuck this. I'm that's, gonna go out and do my thing. That's one of those gigs where you rewrite your set until the minute you go on stage. Piece of paper, pacing yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Fuck As it. you're, you're, you're literally in the wing going, no, fuck it, fuck it. No, I'm gonna start with this instead. Yep. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, that's one of those. That's one terrifying. Of those. <laughs> It's terrifying. I you have did. a band behind you. You know what I mean? And you, if, it, if you hear quiet behind you, it's like, oh, yeah. shit. It's like I have to hear the drummer and this, this backup singers laughing at my shit. Fuck all them. 
But if they're not laughing, I start to panic. You know what? You know what? City room is like that. A little bit. And it's a great room. But the Village Underground's a little bit like that. As far as just a city <laughs> showcase room goes, because everybody is fucking crushing. Yep. And there's a band on stage. Yep. And you're just like, please, I have to fucking kill. And you're up there, and the whole time you're thinking, is the band laughing? You're looking, oh, they are laughing. Okay, good. You know what I mean? There's nothing like, worse than being on that stage and seeing the keyboard guy with his head down. <laughs> taking a hot one. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, yeah, what's next? Yeah, it's, it's so fun. That room, I'll tell you, the comedy cellar itself, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's for me, it's just flawless. It's like a perfect room. You go up, you kill. I don't know what it is. It's mm. just, it's not, I'm not going to say easy. But it's not easy. It's a very challenging room. The, 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 the regular room, I mean. The regular, the original. It's a very hard room. The way it's shaped and everything, that's not an easy. Pussy that's not a, you don't waltz on stage and just kill in there. You have I, to learn that room. I do. No, no, no. I'm not saying. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. It's, I'm not you saying have to learn you to do now, it. Yes. but I'm saying at first, you yeah. have to learn that fucking 100%. room. 100%. But now yeah. it's like a, I don't know. I just love that room. And the laughter, it's, it's low ceilings. You hear it. The pussycat I love, but that Village Underground, man. The, the 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 other room, the bar, I don't like it. I love... I don't like the bar. My favorite of the three is, is the underground. I love the, the original room. My second favorite of the three, honestly, is the, is the lounge. Pussycat. I like... That room just is my kind of style of room. Sure. I just like stuff like that. I yeah. like like a vibe. Little stage. A vibe, yeah. you know? It's mine, too. There's something about it. And it's weird when you go in there. Like, I do my hour show there. And I was always paranoid of not getting people. But you get the world that likes you comes to see you there. Like, I have fans from Germany, Israel, all over the world are coming to the Pussycat on that Tuesday night. And I, I'm like, oh, you just came to the show. Oh, no, we came to see you in some weird accent. I'm like, this is fucking great. There are four, in my opinion, there are four beast rooms in the city where when you kill, yeah, it's like, holy Christ almighty. What are they? So... Uh, and I put these in no particular order, but v VU, for me, yeah. for some people, it's the cellar, yep. the original room. But let's put those t as a tie. Okay. Because that's a matter of preference. Okay. Uh, downstairs at the stand. Okay. Gotham, when it's, when it's full. <sighs> when Gotham is full, because it's high ceilings, but when that fucking room is full yeah. and you do a long set, I mean, that is, you dis it is like you feel it in your bones. Mm -hmm. That's a bone. And then uh, New York Comedy Club Gramercy. Because it's just this fucking box. And you're in it. And when you smash in there, you fucking smash. There, I'm not saying you can't Is have... Is that good... the original New York Comedy Club? Yeah. The, the original one, yeah. That's the original. And Gramercy's yeah. good. I mean, sorry. Um, East Village is good, too. But that, that Gramercy... Downstairs stand, Gramercy, New York Comedy Club, VU, Comedy Cellar, and then Gotham... Those are four rooms. I'm not saying you can't have good sets in other rooms or good shows anywhere yeah. else, but I'm saying as far as clubs go in this city, those are the four where I'm like, holy shit, dude. When you like, when you, you don't, let's put it this way. Those are rooms when you walk off stage, you know if you did your job or not. You know it. Yeah. There it, are rooms like that where you go, I just did my fucking job right it, now. Isn't it weird when you think about it, though, Joe, that we've been here to see the end of great rooms? Yeah. Like when we first moved to the city, the strip was the fucking place. I mean, the strip is where the industry went. I remember that. That's where everybody was. That's, you know. Never they, liked the room. Never liked Nothing it. Nothing against never it, but I liked never it. liked it. Well, the atmosphere that, that they created sucked. And the what hang. You mean, a guy with three fingers telling you you fucking stink? <laughs> no. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Count Dracula <laughs> telling you you never worked the club? I auditioned there and he said, look at you. You clearly don't take pride in your appearance. That's what he said to me. <laughs> yeah, I changed, my I changed my opinion about that guy. He actually was a pretty intelligent guy. <laughs> it's so mean. But Jesus Christ, I mean, the, I, if, I, if, he, if he said that to me now and I was a one-year comic, I'd be famous from a YouTube blog off of that. Yeah, he's a he was a piece of shit. It's like you took you just took it back then. You're like, okay. I mean, dude, he was <laughs> evil. Him and Starla. Remember Starla? Starla was always really nice to me. She she liked me. Hated me. She liked me, but hated I, she couldn't get me past Lucian. She she came up to me. I killed. Went up and killed on my audition. She went, you kill. You did good. She changed kill. 
That's no, great. it wasn't kill. It was great. You did great. You did good. It literally changed it from great to good. So that club. I mean, but listen, Joe. You can't. The one thing. Say what you people say about SD or the seller. If you killed it, you got in. Look, dude. There are certain clubs. Uh, that that's their mo, man. They treat comics like I'm talking about the strip thing, right? And I I don't know if they're still like this. I don't think they are anymore. But at that time, they oh, right now you can have a fucking TikTok video that's killing. They'll put you on. But 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 um. But there are certain clubs where comics are like employees, and they're like, you're not getting a compliment or a smile until we know that we can count on whatever. And they just take that mentality and that approach of, like, do not show too much appreciation because that will potentially lead to a negative. I don't know about or that. Whatever. And that was their approach. I uh, what, what, uh, this, maybe the strip. Yeah, the strip. No, that's, I'm saying the strip. I'm not saying yeah. the seller. I'm saying. Well, the seller the did the opposite. I feel like the seller made us, like, Manny was like, I want the comics, this to be their home. Do you understand I'm agreeing with you? No, I do. Somehow I'm, you disagreed with I'm me. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> I'm saying that the seller did the opposite of that place. Yeah. Yeah. That, that I, place, look. That I, hang was awful. I felt like, again, and I'll name the same four clubs I just named. Those are the four clubs that went. What about I, Caroline's? When Caroline's was. Ca when Caroline's, Caroline's is gone is the only reason I'm not included. But if Carol, I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, we lived through a generation of, when we came here, the Listen. strip was the shit. The cellar was nothing. The Boston Comedy Club was a hot club. Caroline's Gotham was the champagne club, the original Gotham. That was Dude, a great room, though. That room was fire. Yeah. The original Gotham was fire. But, again... That was arguably the best laid-out room I've ever seen in comedy in my life. It was awesome, but you could... Yeah. They, I, the Mazillas, I love them. But, again, I, I went there and killed. I walked out. I was like, Dude, you... Great job. Killed. Send me a tape. And I'm walking away, and the girl's like, going to send him a tape? I go, I just did it in front of him. They, what is better than what I just... Uh, what tape am I going to send him <laughs> that he just saw? You know what I mean? Caroline's... Caroline's... Uh, I, I, I got to... I always give my props to, to, you know, to the people that really change things. Wh whatever. I'm over-explaining. Caroline's in Gotham. Uh, they, those clubs changed my life. I, I can say that without, you know, I don't like to use that phrase loosely because people use it ad nauseum and it yeah. doesn't mean anything. Yeah. They changed my life. Louis Veranda was the first club booker, producer, entertainment director to pass me and pay me. Mm. And I, dude, I told this story when they were, when, when Sac Salacuse was there shooting the documentary the last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went in to do a set for a tell for his last run, mm -hmm. and I got there really early. And you know why I got there really early? To meet Jay. Jay Moore. L L no, Okerson. He's a fucking great guy. And he was literally 45 minutes Jay late. Jay who? Okerson. Oh, yeah. He was 45 <laughs> minutes late. Jay was late? Yeah. So, exactly. So I was sitting there, and Sal Cuse goes, dude, well, you got some downtime. Do you want to talk to me for this documentary? Oh, Yeah. And he goes, so what has Caroline's meant to you? Like, what was this? How did this place play a part in your life? And I started telling the story when I got past, and I was like, dude, I was so fucking broke. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was living with Jay Okerson in Queens. I remember that. Yeah, and I go, I was home at my mom and dad still lived in Pennsylvania, and I still had a drum kit in my old bedroom there, and I was home because I would go home to do my laundry and stuff because I was, was that broke that I didn't want to spend money on laundry. I remember. So, you live with Jay and his kid. Yeah. When he had a baby with Carla. Yeah, and Carla, yeah. And uh and I was I wouldn't go home just to do laundry. I would save the laundry sure. until I went home, I yeah. mean. And uh and I go, but I would always play my drums as a way to get like the stress out because I was so panicked about how daunting this challenge was. And I put my first cell phone I ever had down behind me and I was playing for like 30 minutes or something and then I turned and I looked and I saw I had a missed call and it was a 212 number I didn't know the number and I had sent a tape to Caroline's the week before thinking why <laughs> even bother I don't have a shot in hell 
and it was a vo- there was a voicemail from Louis Veranda, and he goes, "I just saw your tape. Welcome to the club." Wow. And dude, I told that story to Sal Cues. I got up to the part where I said, and then there was this voicemail, and dude, I started I started like shaking, and I dude, I couldn't stop crying. Yeah. I was cr- I was literally crying, and I was like. Holy shit! Because it was like I, it just this rush of what it meant to me. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then the other time that, and I'm not discounting anything that Esty and Noam or, or the Italias or anybody have done for me. People have been, I've been so lucky to have people around me that were supportive. They're not gonna, they're not gonna see this. Oh, okay. Never mind. So forget. <laughs> yeah. Just the just the people I'm talking about right now. Yeah, they're not gonna see this and call you. <laughs> but the other time that that happened for me was. Right after that, uh, or not right after, but I went in to audition at Gotham because Jessica Kirsten recommended me. Wow. I went in and I did her show. She had like a, an early show for young comics, mm. and she put me on it, and she was like, honey, you're so funny. I'm going to recommend you, and she did. And I met Sean. I went in for an audition, and I, went, and I was talking to Sean, and I was about to go on, and fucking Chappelle came in. Wow, and they bumped you? And he did 90 minutes. Oh, God. And Sean was like, you'll just have to go on after Dave. Sorry. And I was great, like, great okay. spot. I go on after Dave. I didn't do very well. Really? Because the, crowd, the crowd's tired. They're walking okay. out. The checks are going down. Sure. I get off stage. I go, God damn it, man. And they were taping it to show it to Chris. Oh, boy. And I go, God damn it. And Sean goes, great job. And I go, ah, Sean, thank you, but come on. He goes, no, 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 I'm going to show Chris the tape. And I go, I don't know if I want you to show him the tape. He goes, he knows what's funny. He knows what's funny. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And they fucking passed me. Yeah. On that. Yeah. Literally like like a thing from like Paul Newman and Tom Cruise. Like, I didn't need to see it. I right. heard it, kid. Like I'm like, and that was it. I had, a, I had regular clubs after that that I could work. Right. And make and some people money. Don't, this and meet, by the way, not to cut you off, but then also meet people that went on to... You know, getting closer with you, getting closer with Burr, doing his weekends, Patton Oswalt. You know what I mean? And it just kind of, those two doors opening were so fucking important, man. Well, I, I rem- like when I see young comics now, you know, coming to the city and like, what do I, you can see it. What do I do? How do I do it? You're doing it. Right. There's no way around that feeling. Dude, I remember having $50 to my name. 50 to my name and not like I don't have a job like comedy was my job and I remember coming down here to the Boston Comedy Club mm-hmm. and Mus- Mustafa Musavia not Mustafa Musavia who ran the door someone didn't show something happened mm-hmm. and he put me up yep. and he gave me $20 and Dude, you know what I'm saying? That meant I could get lunch the next day. Yeah. I meant I could take the train home and I had another $50. I, it was it was like my, I, I fucking lit up. I couldn't believe that. And then he was like, come back tomorrow. And I got another 20 bucks. And then I, Matt Frost, because I passed at that club, he came down one night and he goes, come with me. And he, I didn't even know where we were going. He brought me over to the cellar. Didn't even, I went there a couple of times. Didn't even know about it. Comes down, Essie, this is Robert, this guy was telling you about. Okay, do after him five minutes. I was like, all right, I don't even know what this fucking place is. Right. But I've been I've been working at the Boston Comedy Club, going up after Burr, Patrice, Voss, Chappelle, yeah. Brewer, Moore. Boston was great. I mean. I cut my teeth at the Boston. He, dude, yeah. that was the, I was like, all right, I'll go up after whoever the fuck going up on the boss, Going up to the Boston, on two, me and Dante going up to the Boston on Tuesday in front of three people who were with broken English in the audience. Yeah, and, kill, and killing. Yeah. And I remember, I, went, I was like, okay, went up, five minutes, murdered. I come up, okay, call me tomorrow, tell him to call me, and I was just in. I didn't even, he goes, dude, you're in at the cellar, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all of a sudden, I had gigs every night. I'm working every night. Of course, the 145. That's why I hear people going, dude, I got the last spot. I had the last spot for fucking seven years. Yeah. That's what th- seven years I went up after Godfrey, which 145 meant 345. Yeah, I know. Right after Still him. Does. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 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 what was so important about Gotham. Caroline's was important because Caroline's got me 
hosting and featuring work and spots. I remember I remember this dude. I remember I played New Year's Eve on Caroline's. Do you want to talk about some? I, hold on. I have two. I have to tell you both. Of these. Okay, go ahead. We have time. Where are you going? I have to tell you three things. Okay, you're the only one here. So Caroline's, they would get you. That got me the hosting gigs. Right. With Gilbert Godfrey or, like I said, Pat Oswalt or whoever. You right? Yeah. Uh, Gotham was check spots, but they were consistent check spots. And I remember I pulled Sean aside one night and I go, Sean, I really appreciate the word. Jesus Christ, man. Can I not do a check spot? He goes, I'm giving it to you because you can handle it. Right. And I was like, I realized, oh, that's a compliment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Fuck it. So, um, but Caroline's, dude, I remember. So two money stories for you. The first is I remember Caroline's booked me for New Year's Eve. The end of the first year I was working there. Lewis goes, kid, you want to do New Year's Eve? I go, yeah, great. He goes, okay, cool. It's two sets, 15 minutes. Pays 500 bucks a set. I was like, what? I, dude, I was three years into comedy. I was making $1,000 on New Year's. I couldn't even wrap my fucking I, head around it, dude. dude I understand. I understand. Right? When, when I first did my first prom show. Yeah. When they were like, oh, you're going to get paid uh, 300 bucks. And I, I, was, I was rich. Dude. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, dude, hosting at the cellar, that cash. Yeah. Dude, me and Godfrey used to come, because we used to work all week, every night, and then we'd do Friday and Saturday, every show she put us on, and we'd have that cash, and we'd be like, like we'd just go, bap, bap, sabap, So like you were rich. And you'd stick that money, oh, God, dude, going from nothing, having to eat oodles of noodles. I know. No money. I had to walk home one night. Because I spent my money on a chocolate pretzel. I thought I had a token in my pocket. Tokens were 150 at the time. Right. I had $2. I was like, oh, I'll get a, I got a chocolate pretzel. I had to walk from here to 97th Street. Carla used to make fun of me when I lived with her and Jay because of how, how, how every other week I'd be like, I have to just eat hot dogs all week again. <laughs> they don't get it. Like, she thought it was funny. She's like, and she, she'd be like, Jesus, Joe, you don't have to eat hot dogs. Because she would be like... You can have some of our food if right. you want, but I was very like, no, I must earn my keep, you know. Like, but uh, but um, I used to, wait, wait. I used to, I oh, used, I used to eat my when the, we lived with that South African guy, and he would bring food home, and I would eat his food sometimes. I never told him this, but I I was so hungry and I had no money. Yeah. I would get a spoon and I would just take a spoonful of whatever the fuck he had, and I don't even know what it was. But I would just eat, take a spoonful of it just to have, just to relieve that, you know, that hunger pain. Dude, I remember um, the first time, I remember going to the movies to see Land of the Dead with Kurt, Metzger, Jay, and Carla. And being enamored that I had $20 to go to a movie and also get some snacks. Yeah. Like, that I could afford to spend God, that. Yeah. Like, it was a huge moment. But as you talk about, like, the, the, the generosity and stuff, I'll tell you a story. Dude, real quick, you, before you tell me that story, I remember the first night <laughs> I had a full night of shows and I got to take a cab home. I took a cab from Astor Place to 97th Street, up 3rd, and I was I had my head out the window like Heath Ledger in the Joker. And I was just looking up at the high rises. I felt like I was rich because yeah. I had a like my own little like I, I didn't have no money to take a cab. Yeah. I remember me and Billy at three in the morning at Astor Place just sweating in like mid-August at three in the morning because we <laughs> we we'd have to take that six train. Uh. And we would just it was no AC. Just wet from doing like ten spots each, and going back to that little shit apartment with no AC, and and it was the best, the fucking best. It was. There's a wonder to that time where you have nothing, but it also none of it means anything. Well, it goes back to meaning. Your, yeah, it means a lot to you. Yes, but there are no real stakes. 
there's there's none of the bullshit yet. The competition isn't there yet. The I got to try to sell a TV show. The why didn't I get that thing? You know, I'm ready for my special, but they didn't give it to me. You know, there's none of that yet. Yeah. There's none of it. It's just comedy. I get to do comedy. It's just stage time. I remember stage I said- Stage time to, and getting money for that stage time is the goal. Pay whatever shit rent you had to do. Yep. Fuck, dude, fuck cockroaches, fuck homeless people, fuck rats. None of that mattered. It was about a pack of cigarettes, a cup of coffee, a fucking a New York Post- Lunch and a spot. That was all. Remind me at the very end. I want to tell a story at the very end at your, of your life. Yeah, but trust me, it's very apropos. But it of should the go podcast at the end. of your life. The podcast. Okay. Part. All right. Well, I didn't know. Just at the end, go. Okay, we're ending. Tell me. Got you. Yeah. Um, but the, but trust me, it'll be it'll, okay. it'll be worth it. Sure. But uh, the uh, It'd be funny if it's a, a video of you banging my wife back yeah. <laughs> back in the day when you're getting head from yeah. Don. <laughs> He won't be out forever. He's doing 10 spots. <laughs> I think, yeah, but he comes over here. He's quick. <laughs> anyway, um, I remember I was in L.A. And I was at the Dynasty typewriter, and I was doing a set. And I, What is that? It's a like an alt theater exactly. place. Exactly. Not a bad room, but. Exactly. I got off stage. What is it called? Dynasty typewriter. I don't know why it's called that. I know why it's, it's called But it's a that. decent room. All right. It's where, what a, who cares? Let's not get sidetracked. Well, I like to bust your balls a little. I'm not saying I love the name of the fucking room. I'm just. I need to smash a little of the alt out of you once in a while. Uh, So I got off stage. I went in the green room and Adam Sandler was in the green room. Because he was working on his special when he did that 100% fresh special. Oh, yeah. Uh. And uh, I was like, oh, holy shit, it's fucking Adam Sandler. And then his nephew whose name is escaping me, who I think actually directed some of his movies eventually and stuff. But that kid was like, hey, Joe, I don't know if you remember me, but I used to work at the stand. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what's up, dude? And we started talking. And he's like, this is my uncle. Is that him? I think that's him, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he goes, this is my uncle Adam. And I go, oh, hey. He's like, hey, nice to meet you, man. Right? And, uh... I started talking to him about comedy and I go, how's it treating you? And he's like, well, dude, I'm two years in and blah, 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 blah. And I go, dude, I'm going to tell you something right now. It's not going to seem like it right now, but trust me. I go, enjoy this period so much, dude. I go, there's nothing at stake right now. I go, when I think back to when I was two years in, I go, bro, I was doing gigs in converted pool halls. Yeah. This guy named Paul J. Solari produced shows in Philly. Me and my friend Chip would go in and close the show out because it was like his comedy class graduates. We would close the show out. He'd pay oh. us each. What's that? What would you do with? My buddy Chip. What's that? Oh, God. Anyway. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, I go, we'd close the show out. He'd give us 50 bucks because we were technically ahead of the graduates. Because we had a year and a half under our belt or whatever. And I go, dude, we'd do the show. We'd hang out after and drink. We'd chase after the kids in the class's sister or cousin, whoever the chick came out to see them, whatever. I go, dude, it was the best fucking time of my life because it didn't matter. I just got to do comedy. I thought 50 bucks could have been a, it could have been a million. Yeah. And he was like... Oh, thanks. Yeah, all right. And he was like taking it in. And from the corner, Adam Sandler goes, Yeah, that's that's a pretty good time. He's right. It's a this is a good time. <laughs> and it's I was a like, really that's... good time that I never had. <laughs> <laughs> I literally skyrocketed to fame the fucking second year I was in the I business. Really just take the steam out of shit. I mean, dude, he didn't feel one day of that. <laughs> well, but it wasn't a story about the struggle. Even though it was a story Adam about Sandler went from fucking college to SNL. It was a story about the early days no, when I you know. don't give a fuck. Dude, I'll tell you what, what I miss, and I'm sad that these young comics don't get to do it. I'm really sucked because the... Uh, Fucking I, your opener. <laughs> <laughs> you can fuck them, they gotta, but you got to be... It's got to be a dude. <laughs> you, really hey, do. what's up, game? Dude, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> you can't... Yeah. <laughs> 
bat colleges. I never did them. Woof, dude. Let me. Tell I you couldn't that. get passed by. I couldn't get picked up by a college agent. Buddy, I, don't, I, don't, I, I was. Yeah. I was in the heyday of colleges. I know. I, me, Keith, Burr. I used to go we, open for you at colleges, but yeah. I could never get my own colleges. Heyday. Yeah. It, it was. I'm talking. I mean, bro, Maddie Frost. Yeah. Book. He was one of the guys at book colleges. And what's his name? Maca, uh, Brian. 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 Yeah, I just saw him yeah, a couple Brian, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. He was at the Pussycat. He came down. Oh, wow. He owns his own fucking. He made a software company, and he's just a good for him. He's great, but. Dude, That's I'm great. telling you, man, we would do college, and it sucks for these guys because it was a way to make a lot of cash, thousands of dollars. Going, they fly you in, you do a show. All these chicks, 17, 18 year old college girls would come. You go hang out after. They treat you. <laughs> what? Do you remember that time? I'm not gonna say because people are such pieces of shit, and they. They'll clip it and whatever, but we'll get canceled. We were, yeah, we were, we're back. We were backstage at a college, and the lady from the student committee, like the head of the student committee, it's like an older woman, not older, but like you yeah. know, we were the rep. She was like forty. Yeah, the at, student you know, rep. Yeah, but she was my point. Is she wasn't a student. Yeah, she came over to us and she goes, guys, uh, just you know, just um, we, you know, we have a little rule. Uh, it's a little sensitive here. Please don't say F or N. But she said the actual yeah. words, <laughs> and you go. <laughs> we were looking at her, and you go, "What the fuck kind of comics do you think we are?" <laughs> and you go. You know the only comics who say that are gay and black comics, right? <laughs> and she goes, "Well, we had somebody here last week. I won't name any names, but he it's probably the he, just then we saw a Apollo flyer float by." <laughs> <laughs> but but uh no, she wouldn't tell us who was there, yeah. but whoever was there apparently was a white comic. That that went a little wild. Well, dude, I But I it was that. so fucking funny, dude, when she said it to us. We were <laughs> dude, like, I'm "What?" Fucking <laughs> <laughs> I, I, dude, I I used to love those comics. I used to love those colleges, man. I brought Gino Bisconti to a fucking gig. One that's gig, probably what she was talking about. One, one gig I took him to. One. Yeah. Never again. <laughs> he was like, dude, I love to go. I love to go. All right, cool. I'll take you. I got this gig. Got a little kid comes up. A little black kid comes up. He goes, hey guys, Robert, thanks. You know, for coming. Really, we saw you at the cell. We really wanted to book you. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, just please. We had a sexual assault on campus, so no, no yeah. jokes or stuff like that. And. And uh, he said, you know, no racist jokes, too. We had some issues, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, dude, no problem. I don't, we don't. Great. First jokes out of his mouth. Sexual assault joke to women. Yeah. Joke. And then a racist joke. Did he bomb or do well? No, it didn't do good. The kid, <laughs> the kid, the kid working there goes, he look, comes up, he goes, why would he do that? <laughs> and I went, I have no fucking idea why. Literally. Oh, that's so funny. I come off, I go, what the fuck part of... N he goes, no, it went over. They liked it. I go, that's not the point. And it didn't go over, oh, you that's fuck. That's so funny. Dude, he's, he's a fucking mental patient. I did, a bar, I did a bar show with Gino once. And it was the next day. <laughs> and I go, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. We were on our way there. And I go, what's the order tonight? And he goes... He goes, I was thinking you go up and then I'll go up last since I know everybody at this bar. And I go, good. I go, because if you said you were going up first, I was going to ask if we could stop so I could buy a fucking shovel <laughs> to dig myself out of the hole. And he starts laughing and he goes, buddy, a rape couldn't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking bad, man. He, really he does is. not give a fuck. It's the worst. It's he does not worst. give a fuck, man. It's the worst. Dude, I, I, I mean, I did... Colleges were the worst, but the best. Because it paid... I remember I did Manhattan College once. The money okay. was stupid. I remember just even... The opening money was stupid. Dude, I five grand yeah. to do the cafeteria mm -hmm. at lunch. Okay? <laughs> my cousin... My first cousin went to that school... She didn't even go and see me. I was literally saying her name during the show. Anybody see? Uh, I, I, I gave her a name. Anybody, anybody? Yeah, we know her. Can you go get her? She was, I'm a, it's my first cousin was supposed to be here. Dude, there was six people. Six people at high tops. At high tops. Sitting on stools. At lunch at 3 o'clock. Five fucking grand. How do you say 
you, everything in your body wants to go, I shouldn't do this. But the money was so good. It's like, hey, how you guys doing? Yeah, where are you from? I would just go table to table. Dude, I did a show in front of two people in Rhode Island at one in the morning with no voice. Dude, Eddie, <laughs> if you just you just made me think of a thing. I got a story about him. That was a that was a landmark moment in my career. Is this the same story? No. Because that I was the same way where no matter how look, I I I closed for years with the story getting chanted uh in hatred off stage at the Insane Clown Posse gathering. <laughs> And then they offered me the gig to come back, and I said yes. And the only reason I didn't go back was because I booked my first pilot and had to cancel. Right. <laughs> and my manager at the time tried to talk me into keeping and honoring the Insane Clown Posse <laughs> gig. And I said, you're fired. <laughs> Comedy Central pilot that they want me to have a recurring segment on. What are you talking about? Anyway, um, but... Uh, Why did they boo you off the Insane... They just... They didn't like me, and then I started yelling at them, and then they started chanting. It was what did they thing. chant? Family. That's like their chant. They chant family? They Not just for me. They, it's their chant, period. So family means get the fuck off stage? No, it just means like we stick together, like family. So when, they were, when they're chanting it at you in anger, it probably means like it's time to go. Okay. Uh, what did you do after that? You walked off stage? I walked off early. Was it dangerous? It certainly fucking felt dangerous, Bob. <laughs> 62 clowns screaming in unison. Yeah, it felt fucking dangerous in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Ghostbed. A great night's sleep is important to anybody, not just comedians. Ghostbed makes premium mattresses at an affordable price all designed for cooler and more comfortable sleep. Take advantage of a free and fast shipping, their 101-night mattress trial, and financing starting at just 35 bucks a month. You heard me. You can get a brand new mattress for as low as 35 bucks a month. Listeners get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories, or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code YKWD at ghostbed.com slash YKWD for 40% off site-wide, limited time only. This show is sponsored by ShipStation. I mean, we live in this automated world. You know, but some things still require some uh, tedious manual work. I'm telling you right now, ShipStation is the best. ShipStation makes it easy to automate shipping tasks for orders from every marketplace in one dashboard. Get 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use promo code to try ShipStation free for two months. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use promo code YKWD and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code YKWD. Made for a great closer. I closed my first half hour with that story, and then they sent me death threats. <laughs> oh, it's been a ride. 62 clowns in the woods. Yeah, that's dangerous. <laughs> the, uh, uh, but, dude, um, <laughs> Eddie If called me. Dude, it's like literally, I think it was three months ago. And he goes, he goes, I got a gig for you. And I go, okay, what is it? And he goes, it's in, God damn it, I can't remember the name of the place. Where is that place with, like, the white sand beaches overseas and the clear water and everybody there is in linen the whole time? What, the Ma was, Amafi Coast? It was something like that. Okay. It was something like that. Like the French Riviera? It was something like Dubai, but not Dubai, like, okay. along the water. Okay. Ah, oh, it's killing me. I can't remember. He goes, I have three autistic kids over there that are looking this up yeah. right now. He goes, but it's a festival. They want five comics. They've got me in charge of booking it. It's going to pay you more money than you've ever gotten for a gig, oh and it's God. an expenses-paid vacation. And wow. I go, are you out of your fucking mind? And he goes, what? I go, do you want me to fly over there just to bomb? Is that what you're asking me? I go, you think a crowd of linen-dressed people... 
Yeah. On the most expensive vacation hotspot on earth. Yeah. At an outdoor show. Uh-huh. Want to hear the shit that I do on stage? Yes. And he goes, probably not, but still it pays. I go, Eddie, no. You said no. <laughs> yeah, I said no. Did you find out how much it was paying first? No. What if he said 60 grand? It's not 60. Grand. What if it was? It was probably like 10. Oh, okay. That's the most you've, that's the, that's not the most you've ever he been paid. He just meant like to get to do one set for 15 minutes or something. It's not a lot. Can you stop Sorry. undercutting my stories, gotcha. please? Gotcha. Please. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. My point of the telling the lot, story no. is it, it is a lot. I mean, can we lie a little? Like, Nobody's fact checking these stories. My point of the story is yes. it, it's a nice landmark to go. I got to a point where I was able to say, no, I don't care how easy the money seems. Yeah. I'm not doing that gig. I don't care what the perks are. I, I don't that. care that the perk is I get to hang there for a week and have the best vacation of my life. I'm not doing it. I haven't got there yet. Yes, I you have. I, no, I still go to Aruba Rays every year. Is that a tough gig, though? Oh, it's such a great gig. Yeah, no. then what Like, what would be bad about it? I I, I don't know. Uh, Eddie's gig isn't bad. I'm just not the right comic for it. I don't know, saying. dude. I... But what's bad about Aruba Rays? Not that it was a joke. It didn't fly. Fuck off. <laughs> um, f- I was really trying to say it's nice. Fucking, John Mayer? Fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> but if you told me, it sounds so arrogant to say, that because people actually have to work for a fucking living. Ten grand? It sounds arrogant to, to say right now, oh, if you offered me 3500 bucks to go stand on a milk crate in the corner of a, a cafeteria at a college, I'd, I'd say no. Yeah, because but back in the day we said yes, of course. Because but eventually, back in the day, we did so many fucked up situations for money. We were prostitutes. But also, eventually, too, as you build your let's I hate the word, but as you build your brand and your career and all this stuff, you have to protect yourself to an extent. You can't just do anything. You the worst thing you can do, yeah, is a gig. And and it happens still, but as a gig where people are coming up to you going, what the fuck are you doing here? Right. That's not good. Well, people say that to me when I do Aruba, but here's the thing. I love Aruba, and the gig is a great gig. Like, the the show, he, the actual comedy club that he's created is a, like, if it's, it's, it's a club. There's- and, and it happens to be in the place that I love more than... My favorite right. place in the world. And I happen to get to work. You know, it's weird that I like Tony V. I work with Tony V, who was like one of my favorite. He's awesome. I mean, one of the best in the biz. But I'm saying, like, there's a difference between a guy in Aruba going, what are you doing all the way over here? Well, people do And that. somebody coming up to you at a bad gig yeah. and going, what are you doing here? Yeah. Like, how did they get you to come to? That's the thing that, that's what I'm talking You know about. what I say no at to? At a cafeteria corner at a college is that is one of those gigs well, you now. You know what I say no to more now? Bad people. I don't, I do gigs that are fucked up. I, I'm in places where people are like, what are you, why are you here? It's a 50-seater and a blah, blah, blah. Nothing wrong with a small room. But, but bad people. There's clubs. Sure. That people love, people go to, blah, blah, blah. But the way what they the way they treat comedians and the way they treat me, and what they do to us, I'm just like I don't want I don't I can't be around it because the second I get doesn't matter the money, doesn't matter where it is. That's what I'm saying. That's part of what I'm saying. What the the I can't the being around it all week, the amount of stress, anxiety, and and fucking justified anger and resentment that I get ruins my life and comes out on people I care about. So I'd sure. rather just say, you know what? I'm not going to work for you because I know you're not a good person. There are clubs I will never go back to. I don't care how much yeah. I could theoretically make. Mm-hmm. There, I agree with you. Part of what I'm saying, and by the way, I'm not saying this about Eddie at Eddie's gig. I just knew of it was a so. gig where I wasn't going to represent myself well sure. because I wasn't right for it. So, so that's part of it. If I don't think I'm right for the gig, I say no because it's not fair to the audience either. I don't care what you're paying me; they're paying too. I would rather do it's, a, a it's eighty make, seater exactly. with my fans than a three hundred and forty fifty seater, a thousand seater with a bunch of people you stuck in there to buy chicken. Or, 
I gotta be racist, but the uh, <laughs> the uh, I didn't say fried. <laughs> But, but no. But it's that. It's Sorry, ribs. It's that. That's but it could too. also be. It could also just be. Hey, our demographic here is, uh, twenty-year-old college girls. Yeah. And I'm gonna go, guys. I'm not right for it. It's just not. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Like it just doesn't. So, so that's part of it. But, but a big part of it is what you're saying about not going to places where you're not, where the people, uh, curating or proprieting or whatever are treating people right because that reflects in the experience. That isn't just about how they treat you. It's also nine times out of a 10 or a room like that. They're not controlling the audience. Nope. Audience gets out of hand. Yeah. Uh, things run too long. There is a, you know, there's, there's there, you know, there is a way, there is a yeah. way a comedy show is supposed to be handled and run. And it's, it's a lot of it's on the club. A lot of it's on the club. A show should not be two hours. A show should be an hour and a half. The openers shouldn't do 45 each. You know what I mean? There should be bouncers. There should You can sure. train an audience, any audience, to be fucking have themselves, right? You can do that as a club. Or you can let them run. Like, the check spot is so stupid and ridiculous. At this point of the game, that a club has a check spot, it's fucking mind-boggling. That I, they I haven't figured it. that shit out. I just talked about they, this today on uh, Dan St. Yeah. Germain uh, yeah. and his wife have a podcast called uh, uh, The It Couple. And I was, we were talking about this today. About This is why I stopped doing clubs on the road. I'm done. I do independent venues now because yeah. I'm not fucking sitting there yeah. to, to, to work your rhythm of how the dollars come in. Yep. Where I'd rather take the hit. I will go into a venue that doesn't have a fucking email list and sweat out selling those tickets myself so I can say, here's how the show goes. Yep. I do some shows, I go, no opener, it's just me. Love I want to deal with it. Yeah. And I'm done. I'm not Nothing doing it. That. I love when they go, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Kelly, and you walk out. Yeah. What's up? What's going on? That's great. You know, I mean, of course, I always have to bring an opener because these three autistic kids want to come on everything. <laughs> Can I come to Jersey? Yes. I'll bring one. <laughs> what about Tampa? One of you. I'll bring one when I can. But, you know, I'm doing, you know, Toronto's a festival for JFL, but they were like, what do you want to do for an opener? I was like, how long's the slot? They go an hour. I go, we're not having an opener. Yeah. I will go out and handle it myself. Fuck, I love JFL Toronto. It's they great. won't use me. Yeah, I'm going up. Toronto, for some reason, they used me two years and that's it. I'm excited. Yeah. I haven't been back in a it's long time. It's a very time. alty festival, that version of it, isn't it? I wouldn't say it's alty. No, I mean, there's a lot of mainstream Who? guys there. You know, Soder was there last year. Soder's Sam alt Mor now. Sam Morell's there alt. this year. <laughs> fucking far alt. I'm not alt. You're as alt as, dude, you're fucking Jesus Christ. Jeanine Garofalo called you alt. <laughs> If she called me anything, I'd be flattered. Ooh, ah, oh, see, that's all. You like Janine? I love Janine. You do? I love Janine. Who Would doesn't you? like Janine? Would you? I wanted to, there was a time in my life where I wanted, to, was convinced I was supposed to marry her. Really? Yeah. I said that to her. I was, a, I was on a show with her. I was on a debate. There, there was this show called The, it's still out. It just came back. It's called Uptown Showdown. And you, the two teams of comics and you debate. For debate what? It'll be like books versus movies. Okay. It's, you know, whatever. It's fun. It's really fun. And yeah. you have to go up, though, like, you have to be funny, but you have to go up debate style and, like, really lay out, like, an argument. Okay. Which and, is fucking your forte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was always did pretty well at it. But, uh, but I, w w w the first or second one I was ever on was books versus movies. And she was on team books, and I was team well, movies. She was. I know, but one of the jokes I made was that if it wasn't for movies, I wouldn't have realized when I was 17 years old that the woman I'm supposed to marry is Janine Garofalo. You said that? Yeah. What'd she say? Got a huge laugh. Yeah. She, I don't know. She laughed. She was just like, oh, my. You know, like, whatever. I, was, I thought she, I thought she, I, great. Know, I thought she was gay at one point. But she likes guys. I think so, yeah. Did she? I've heard her talk about her boyfriends and she stuff. Have, she has a boyfriend? I don't know about now. I've heard her talk about her boyfriends. Yeah. It was yeah. weird. She I like went, She went through a weird, like, I always thought, I remember we did, uh, when I was touring with Dane at some point, we were at some big Comedy Central party up on 50-something uh, 50, 50 Street uptown, 
and we were sitting over here at the after party, and she was like over there, and she fucking, you could tell she hated us. She wanted not, didn't say hi. You know what I mean? I mean, she's gone to skank fest and shit. She's that, not but, snotty. But I, but I th yeah, I th like I saw her at the stand, and she's been the nicest person she's, ever. Yeah, she's great. And I'm like, she's working at the stand with like pieces of shit, like Ari and <laughs> Big J and Lewis. And I'm she like, defended Louie. She defended. She was like, yeah. people should be. He should have another chance to come back. Like, I, I think I had the wrong impression of her for some weird reason. Because of her fucking weird cats movie. I think. <laughs> what was it? I fuck cats. What was it? Cat. The truth about cats. Yeah, and dogs? that's is that her. Yeah, that was, it. that was her. <laughs> I think a lot of people look. You know, uh, I had the wrong. I think all these years I had the wrong, the wrong, the whole. Like, she probably had the wrong impression of you. She's probably like this fucking club guy hates my guts and thinks I'm some fucking poet that doesn't whatever. And right. you know, like they think that about. Well, because I'm from Boston, and, you know, if you know the story about her and Bobcat and all them, who I love Bobcat, you know, they, the, these guys in Boston created this scene, mm -hmm. and then Hollywood came to Boston. Yes. And, and these people moved to Boston because of the scene, and they took those people. So they, took, who they took Janine, they took Bobcat, they took, of course, Stephen Wright, who was one of the guys. You he know, was but, from Boston, though, right? From Boston. He was one of the guys. Okay, yeah. But, and, you know, most original, I mean, one of the most original comics ever, right? And, um, you know, and those guys from Boston were like, fuck them and fuck, you know. That's one of the reasons why Boston comics, after that, would always make it hard on... Outsiders. Outsiders coming, famous comics coming into Boston to headline. They'd be like, all right, cool, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna MC Sweeney, you're gonna middle, and we're gonna fucking bury these cocksuckers. And that's where that came from, wow. from that situation. And then I think I always had that outlook on her. And then, and then, but when I saw her at the stand, she was like, she was out front talking. I was like, she seems so nice. She's really, I don't know her very well at all, but ever since I met her a few years back, she's always been very, very sweet to yeah. me. And uh, it's nice seeing her. She always stops and like talks for a she minute. But she never does any, you never see her do any stand up. She like does on stand. television. No, no, I know. I mean, you like she's been working the stand since it was at the old venue, right? Yeah. <laughs> and she hasn't put anything out. She works Eastville too. But she's she does Eastville. She doesn't Those are put like the anything two out. She does. Does she do well? I mean, is she? No. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> How does I just, she make money? The only reason I paused was I'm like. I don't remember the last time I actually caught her on the show. I go in and she's like getting off. Or, Look, I got I'm fucking, usually on later than she. There's is. open micers putting out specials every six months on YouTube. How the fuck is so, she not putting something out? I don't know. I get so I don't know. I get so disheartened with this shit, man. Like, and I know I shouldn't, but you know, I, I get so fed up with how everybody is doing everything that I just don't want to do anything. I don't want to participate. I'm not trying to make it about me. I'm just hate speaking it. to something. No, you you, know, you, people are like, when are you going to put this new hour out? I go, I'm like, I don't know if I am going to put it out. Everybody's putting a fucking thing on YouTube. Like, that was like a really cool thing you could do when there was like a means and a perspective or, or a motivation to do that thing. It was a workaround. And now... It was a workaround, the, the streaming services, that uh, had gatekeepers. Right? You know, clips well, on YouTube, or clips on Instagram. Every fucking comic is putting fucking clips up. It's a, every comic is doing promo videos. It's like Jesus fucking Christ, man. Like, it's it's everybody just thinks like there are no. I don't mean to sound bitter. I hope that I don't. You do. <laughs> you do to all the young comedians. I love young comics. I really do. Like one of the things huh. I love, the the thing I'm most flattered about or by when I do a show in a city is somebody says, you know, the comics are all going to come out to the late show, whatever it is. Yeah. I am so fucking flattered by that. Sitting with them after at the bar, having beers, talking. I, I, I know the one, when you go on the road and the comics show up to see your set and hang out after, and what that's, it's all, it is a, one of the, one of the, the highlights of, it means the world the gig is that, oh, these, that's cool. Yeah. Even means, though, you know, it means the I mean, world. when they don't, 
It sucks too. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that. Yeah, right. Where you see them but, all show up and then they leave halfway through your set. <laughs> yes. This guy stinks. But I mean This guy's no Doug Stanhope. <laughs> what you you're know, fat, you love your wife, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> what bugs me though, so it's not an it's not a thing against young shoulders. Oh jeez. Sorry. It's not a shot towards young comics. It's not. But one thing that bothers me is that there are no sacred tools for established comics to use anymore. Everybody has access to every tool at all times. And it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, man. Like, I'm just trying to sell a thing that I've been doing for two fucking plus decades now. And, I'm, and I've got to combat with a sea of content in every direction you turn. It used to at least be that one or two assholes would build up a fucking website, right? And they would say, has headlined, and they'd name all these clubs, and then anybody in the industry knew, this is a bullshitter. They didn't work these clubs. Yeah. They did bringer shows, and they're saying that they headlined the clubs, or they produced their... There was at least a way to see through or kind of cut through it. Yeah. And that, comics doing that didn't create noise. It just was an eye roll. There's a thing now where it's like between the TikTokers, the Instagram models, the 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 influencers, the the the, the uh, you know every comedian thinking you have to do this this all the time because it's about building this presence in this virtual world. It's like Jesus fucking Christ, man! Like it's exhausting. It's fucking it's exhausting. exhausting. It's exhausting. Like. Not I'm not only, saying it should just be there for me. I'm not trying I to cut you off. I get you, man. No, but I just think that you're right. It's exhausting because it's constantly evolving into something else. Somebody else finds a new way to do something, and that's what you have to do. It's Now it's clips. Then it's shorter clips. Now it's longer clips. Then it's fucking crowd work clips. Then it, And it's like back in the day, there was an evolution. There was a system in place where you went in. You moved to either New York or L.A. You got in at a club. You were seen. You did a showcase. People saw you. You got a manager. You got an agent. You went out to things. You either swam or sank. Yeah. And, and, then, you, and then you OD'd on the road. You OD'd and that on was the, road. the system. Yes. <laughs> a nice point A to point B yeah, journey was, for us all. There's no sexual assault. <laughs> But it's it is a changing. You know, I'm actually I was going to put my my specials on. I think you know it's weird because my special, I feel like it was one of the last paid specials where people paid for it. Right. You know, Louis was like, "Should we just give this away?" I was like, "No." Right. I was like, "Dude, we I worked we worked on this. We're putting together something special. We're creating a room. We have a thing that we a vision that I you're going to create that I see. We're going to have this thing." This is worth something to people who follow me. And it was. It paid off. Fans showed the fuck up, right? I went and promoted it. I went on all these shows. Those people helped me. But now it's like they're like, okay, well, we should take your special and put it on YouTube. And I'm like, why am I going to throw my special out on YouTube to what? See a barometer of how much people either like me or don't? And who's getting all the data? Who's getting everything? YouTube. YouTube's getting everything from all of it. I get nothing yeah. but views. And maybe, maybe people at this club. I'm putting, I actually, there's this new app that's. No, I, I know it. That I don't up. even want to talk punch about up it. Live. I don't. I'm doing it. Listen. I'm doing it. I'll tell no, you why. No, I, no, 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 no. You don't want to talk about it. I why. don't want to talk about it because I don't want everybody flooding to the fucking thing. <laughs> it's like, it's like there's a thing now that could be a great alternative to but YouTube and I'm excited about it. And here's I'm like, why it's, here's why it's different than YouTube. Yeah. Be here's why, Joe. This is why it's not going to be the same thing. And everybody can go to it and do it because. It's not going to give you fans, right? Your fans are going to have a place to go to give you all as they... It's, there's no... You can say whatever you want as long as it's funny. There's no uh, editing, right? There's no... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there's no... Uh, like, like YouTube. Joe List got a special demonetized. Yeah, I know. No, because I know. of content. Yeah. I know. There's none of that with this. I know. And, I think it's great. And 
you, all I want from you, I, me, the guy you came to see, the guy you like, or the guy you might like, because you saw a little clip, is your email. So, why? I can send you more of my stuff or let you know when I'm coming to you. Yeah, I know. I, I, I like what they're doing. I had a long talk. Steve Burns very heavily involved with them. I'm telling you, dude. And I talked to Steve and, and the guys that created it early, very early on when it was just in the prototype stages. Sure. Where they, were, they were explaining it to me, and I didn't fully understand it. And now I do. And, uh, and I think it's great. But, I mean, it's just... Here's here's look. I can't, but here's not, here's, it, here's why. Like right. it doesn't matter. It does, it's not like YouTube, right? Or a new thing. This thing is for you and your fans and my fans who like you. Where you can tr you get to touch them when you want to. I, I, Unlike YouTube, where you throw it out there and hope hope. It does something. Yeah, but you also, I think, would want to discover new stuff on there, no? You can. You will. You'll be presented with what, you, like MySpace used to do. If you like this guy, you're going to like this guy. Well, that's what YouTube does, too. YouTube does it, but it's a fucking weird way they do it. It's in a weird, you know, I got to get, because I liked a, 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 a fucking, because I, I liked a Shane Gillis clip. All of a sudden, I just get 90 Tucker Carlson fucking clips. <laughs> It's like what the fuck? What the fuck? All yeah, my all my feed is is fishing, Tucker Carlson, you know, and and and, and that and, happened to me on Instagram where I saw a couple of videos of like you know where it was like you know like a a sick dog gets nursed back to health and I liked it yeah or like. <laughs> A kid that was like burned severely in a fire is like giving this inspirational talk about you know don't ever let life yeah, don't ever light a stop light, you. don't ever light a fire with gasoline <laughs> yeah. and like I like those and then all of a sudden my feed would be all like you know like a, a fucking baby with one eye yes <laughs> like, yeah, a, it, a dog with no head I'd be like and there's no Jesus Christ it, guys it'd be it'd be it'd be great if there was some chubby Indian girl doing that it's not. It's a it's an algorithm that's just choosing that for you. Look, that's why I think punch up the the, the app there. Well, it's going to be com you're not going to see that other bullshit. It's going to be I hope up. I hope I I believe wholeheartedly in the platform. Yeah. And I think what they're doing is great. My, Unedited content. It's, and it's it's certainly my, not my place to not try to help blow them up yeah. they're doing a thing they want people to come to it that's a good thing for them yeah but my concern with e even like what i'm saying is is that people flock to everything now i know because it's just another notch in their belt and people flocking to something means now there's too many users there's too many this there's too much content we need an algorithm we need an algorithm to I help think, with this because we can't I, personally curate this let me anymore. Just say something to you, all right? That's what happens. I, I want to say something to you. Yeah. I look at like I've somebody was talking about the career and how this guy's doing this and this one's doing that and there's I look at like what you've done, what I've done, where we're at, dude. The the you have a, a, a successful. Uh, sandwich shop bar, your dream. I mean, your dream. Part of my dream. But one of your dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, knowing you. No, no, yeah. Back in the day, we used to go make sandwiches. Yeah. How much you love food. But another, you have another podcast, kind of the same thing about things you love with a a a, a, a person you love, and it's successful. Your stand up, you get to do what you want. Mm -hmm. Your stand up is not what they what they push you toward you just do what the fuck you want both of us have this mm -hmm. this life now where we're working with friends doing shit we love like i came back off my vacation this time going i can't wait to get back to the bonfire to get back to ykwd to get back to bone to pick to get back to my stand-up to i want to go like in my brain i had this vision of this thing i want to write this year i'm like go write this thing right now yeah because you know of the strikes going on, and I have a couple of things that are on hold. I'm like, let's go just do that. We're in such a great position. So, do you, like, 
all this shit that we're talking about. You got to do this. You got to do that. You don't have to do any of it. No, I. You don't know. have to do any of it. I don't give a fuck. I don't have to do any of it. I can do what I want because where I'm at, I am a hundred. I have a family, a roof over my fucking head. I make good money. I make insane money for what I do. So and that circles back to what I was originally saying, which is, I get disheartened, but I, I, I was getting to this and I didn't get to it. I get disheartened where I don't want to participate in any of it because I get annoyed. Yeah. But then I realize I shouldn't. I should just keep doing things the way I you do, do them. them. The way we, you, the way you do them, the way I do them, the way it's happening. Dante always says to me. He pimps, pimps up, hose down. He says, pimps up, hose down. <laughs> Women of bitches. He says, I'll hit you if you talk to me like that again. Goon hand a bitch if she don't listen. <laughs> uh, no, but he says, he'll always say to me, crab legs. That's like an inside thing we have. Is, that a, is it because he loves crab legs? No. it's Well, he does love crab legs. He's but from I called Baltimore? Him one day. <laughs> what does yeah, that mean? He's from Baltimore. He was a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I called him one day, and I go, he go, or he, he called me one day, and he goes, what are you doing, man? And I go, oh, dude. And I go, actually, I called you one day and told you I was doing this because it was one of the other times I did it. But I go, bro, I just went to the fish market. I bought $200 worth of Alaskan king crab legs. And I'm going home right now to cook them because I felt like eating fucking crab legs. And I go, and I remember a time in my life where I couldn't even fathom doing this. Fuck yeah. I'm so happy right now. And he goes, oh, you motherfucker, that sounds awesome. What did I, blah, 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 right? So whenever I start going about this shit, he goes, he goes, Joe, man, crab legs, man. Yeah. You can go buy motherfucking crab legs when you want to buy mother. Yeah. So what, you, you're mad that you don't got a mansion? Or you're not a millionaire? You can buy crab legs. And he's, he's right, man. It's like, it's like you, you got to remember, like, that, that's what I'm, you know, all this shit we're talking about. N not... Saying yes to the cafeteria show anymore. Yep. Not going to the club where the guy treats you shitty because you're like, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. Yep. Appreciating your family. Appreciating that you got a roof over your fucking Appreciating head. the fun. You know? The, the insane fan base that has shown up that we've built, whether it be ONA, whether it be, uh, you know, your own fan base, YKWD, uh, Taste Buds, uh, Skanks. All these different fan bases, Bonfire, yeah. everything, they all come out and support Dude. the shit we do and 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 have let us at this point not worry about fucking eating. My fucking my horror movie podcast, we'll see you in hell. It's like it's it's numbers wise, it's not as big as taste buds. Yeah. But man, we've been doing it for ten years, me and Pat Walsh. These guys stick with they stick with us through yep. thick and fucking thin. It's like I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Yeah. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the Taste Buds fans. I yeah. can't tell you how much I appreciate the the O and A and the Jim and Sam fans, the Skanks, dude. You know we're about to go back to Skank Fest, and it's like in in when is it? It's late September, right? I'm just waiting for you to fucking acknowledge the YKWD fans. I'm, I'm about to. Give I mean, me a second. get there. Okay. Get there. You already said it. I mean, get, it should have been number one. Uh, this is the one that created it all. <laughs> I mean, does Billy have a podcast if I didn't do it? Can I tell you something? What? How mad it still makes me. <laughs> How mad it... Wait, we're about to go to Skank Fest. Yeah. You go to Skank Fest, it, 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 it's like being on the red carpet. It's like being George Clooney on the red carpet Ooh. for four straight days. It's amazing. It's wild how excitable yeah. and excited and yeah. supportive the fans are. It's why yeah. it's so awesome. It's yeah, so Lewis fucking and the, awesome. the gang really created this fucking amazing festival. Yeah. That we get to go to. And it has all the visual components of an ONA thing without the evil fuck you thing. Without the bad guys in <laughs> Yeah, the without movie. the guy going, yeah. You fucking suck. But um <laughs> Yeah. It really but the is YKW great. this this is where it all started. Uh and Do you know how big we'd be if me and you stuck together back in the day and we we just did YK let me ask this question. Without your little shitty smirk and your fucking grumpy eye. It wouldn't be big. That's why it didn't happen. Hey, can we Oh my God. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not saying it wouldn't be fun or great. Oh my god! I'm saying Joe. this is how it was supposed to be. You don't think that me and you, if we stuck together and just did, you know what, dude? Podcast, Joe DeRosa and Robert Kelly. The arguments we had, the realness we had, the way it was. The fucking shit that we talked about. We could go into funny. We could go into ball, but serious, arguing, real shit. You don't think we'd be, we would have been the biggest podcast? I think if we did it, I think if we did it, what am I trying to say? I think if we. Trying to say I'm no. Getting, no, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a burp. Oh, good. That's good. I think if You're we did. You bird thinking about this? Yeah. <laughs> bird. <laughs> uh, I, think if, I think if we did the show that we did then. But we're somehow magically able to be the people we are now. It would have been great, right? I don't think in any way, shape, or form we would have made it through with who we were back then. Nah, we would. Do we? We wouldn't have. We, we almost murdered each other like six times that I can remember. Like, yeah, like we would fight. We fought. I mean, violently fought. Like fights where we almost had to go to like would have to go to like couples therapy or something. It was like bad. wild <laughs> fights. I mean, wild. Yeah. And that's when there was no producers. There was no. I mean, I just did it myself. Nobody was there. Nobody was there. Soder would sit us. there, put his head down. Yeah. Nervous. Oh my god. <laughs> we were so fucking angry. It's you know it's and opinionated. It's what breaks my heart about. Not that me and Billy aren't cool, but like, I wish I could have been. I can only speak for myself. I wish I could have been a different guy when I got to go through yeah. my run with Bill. Right. Because we got to do a lot of amazing shit. Yeah. I got to do a lot of amazing shit because he allowed me to do it. And I got to watch a guy literally go from his, I was with him his first sold out weekend ever at the Stress Factory. And I got to watch him go all the way to MSG. Yeah. And I was with him. Opening for him at every step. Yeah. And I wish during that run I could have he never been. met Paul Verzi. Yeah. <laughs> or Dean Del Rey. Or, or Dean Re <laughs> Or Josh Adam Myerson. Or Josh. Bartnick I like. <laughs> I love Bartnick. Yeah. Oh, my God, Bartnick. I got to call him. He He's texted me while I was in the woods. He's the best. Fuck. But, but no, I... I not, and not to say we didn't have a ton of great times, but I wish I could have been a different dude... And just appreciated it. But that was the same thing with you and me. I wish I could have just had fun coming two blocks away from my apartment to record a podcast. But, man, the f it's the fear, dude. The fear you have throughout this business. It sucks. Until you get your footing. Until you have your own shit. Yeah. You, everything that everybody does, you feel. You're, wait, wait, what's that supposed to fucking mean, dude? What does that I, I mean? Know. What are you trying to take away from me right now? It's crazy. I know, dude. I had the same. I know. Dude, I've had the same thing with uh, Burr, with, you know, where it's like money or ego. It's a lot of his ego. My shit, I'm not going to say to you, but I'll speak for myself. Ego was like, what the, f if I, if I do this or that, I'll, who am I? What the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. And in reality, you know, it was all bullshit. And it, it ruined a lot of, and I'm not, on my end and on other people's ends. Yeah. I mean, it's like that ego. Now it's like this stage of the game. I'm so grateful for the comic friends that I have. Yeah. I still have, you know, and that we can now, we're finally at a spot where we're kind of lifting each other up or supporting each other. And having a good time where it's not a um it's not a fucking I can't I gotta you know, I gotta keep my shit close to me. Cause you Dude, know, I, I know don't, you know what I mean? I'm, Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. I'm friends with guys now that I literally say, Thank God I wasn't friends with them back then because I might have fucked it up with right. my bullshit. Sure. Um, you know, and also I'm still friends with guys that I was friends with back then where it was explode dude. I can't tell you this, and I mean this. I cannot fucking begin to tell you how much I appreciate our friendship now, what is it has evolved into, and that we can have talks like this on or off a podcast. Yep. Emotional talks. How many times have I called you in the last year even and been like, dude, I'm just fucking really, I, I'm so fucking mad about something, not with you, yep. but something else. Yeah. And you're like, dude, just listen, man. But, you know, and you talk me down. And I hope that I can do that for you once in a while, too. But, like, it's, uh, 
I'm appreciative of that. You know, I really am because uh, there were certainly times in our younger years where we probably both would have bet we wouldn't we wouldn't have gotten to it. Yeah, you know? man, I I just think back in the day dude, we were young fucking stallions just trying to be the <laughs> motherfucker. I mean, it was so yeah. scary back then. And now we're at a certain point where I'm like it really is like uh, it's a you know um I kind of understand the way it is now. I, I'm, I'm very confident in my stand-up. I know what type of stand-up. I know what I can do. I'm confident in my acting. I'm, I, look, am I the greatest podcaster ever? No, but I'll fucking, I can go on any podcast anywhere, anytime, and say some funny shit. Right. Uh, I can you know, set people up to be funny. I, I, I know I can hang out with the funniest motherfuckers around and mm. do it. Um, and I can look back, I can look off from a distance now and see the egos. I can see those, those things and I can, st I can stay away from it or I can kind of laugh at it now. You know what I mean? Like there's people who yeah. have it where I'm just like, all right, dude, I'm out. I don't need, oh, it's funny. There's... I don't need to, ch I'm not going to change you. Yeah. I thought I was like a, some comic vigilante back in the right. day and I'm going to fucking make sure people are righteous. Well, that's ego right there. It's ego. That's ego. hundred percent. You know, God rest Patrice. God rest his soul. I love the guy dearly, and I miss yeah, him. He's a hack. <laughs> I still miss him all the time. But Patrice had that ego where he, you know, he would feel the need to call you and go, "Let me tell you why." All right, listen, this is what you're doing wrong, you know. And it's like we all had that. That was a phase we were in. That's uh, one of the great. It's not a regret. I don't know what the term is, but w one of the great unfortunate truths to me is that Patrice isn't around. I would have loved to have seen who he evolved into. Right? Yeah. Because he was just at that point where he was saying things like, on stage, where he was saying things like, I love my girl's daughter. Yep. And it, it I'm resentful of it because I, it's another dude's kid or whatever, you know? Yeah. And all that stuff. And it was funny, but I was like, wow, he's getting like to this now like vulnerable place. He would have place. been a dad by now. Yeah. He would have been, a, he, him and Vaughn would have had a kid, maybe two. Yeah. And he would have been a dad and he would have been a totally different person. Yeah. He went, once you, you know what I mean? I know that because that fucking straightened me the fuck out. Oh, boy. Who is it? You? You beep, you fuck? I mean, the producer of my show buzzed in on this show. Where did you go? It's even worse because I texted Joe going, I'm not going to buzz in. I'll text you when I get here. And then out of habit, I buzzed in anyway. You texted me? No, no. No. Oh, sorry. oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are these guys doing? I don't, he's, fu he's just an asshole. Uh, <laughs> Did, did, he no, looked, but, but oh, he's definitely. So he would have been. He would have been a different guy. He was. It, w it would have been an interesting. Uh, you know, it would have been interesting to see him become big. Well, dude, even like even stuff. You know, Sal. Sal's like family to me now. You know, never we've, liked him. He's not great. Not a good guy. <laughs> but Sal's like family to me, man. And like you know, I, I truly fucking love the guy. I really do. Yeah. And um. And we're really close. Uh, and we were t we were boys, but the podcast really is, I think, was the thing that shoved us into as tight as we become, are now. Like, oh, look, but, I, but know wait, me, I know Sal. I know Sal. All right, good. I know Sal. Uh, I'll hold I, that right, question. But on, I was just going to tell you, good. there was a. This is why I say, thank God I didn't know this guy back then. Right. Because had I done this with him ten years ago, it would have been over. And he's. You know, we got to work around the Joker's schedule and all that stuff. My shitty ego, fragile bullshit would have been like, you know, dude, I'm a fucking perfect. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you don't have the wherewithal to go, dude, he's got that thing going on. That thing helps this thing you're doing. Immensely. You know? Yeah. Well, let's give me a little credit, please. Here's your ego. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I'm so glad we never did this podcast. <laughs> So glad. Ow. Uh -huh. That's karma, you cocksucker. Oh, you wow. Get? Really? The, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's I mean, funny. I mean, that's really funny. <laughs> uh, but I would have been like, I, I just didn't know how to check my shit. Yeah. I didn't know how to appreciate. You know what it was? Simply put, I didn't know how to not take shit personally. It's like you, 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 you're making it about yourself all the fucking time. But the problem is, is when you get into this business, you're pursuing a thing where you have to kind of make it about yourself. Because if you don't, 
you have no chance yeah, so I was trying whatsoever. To, I understand it now better, but my therapist used to always tell me, like, when social media, I'm like, dude, don't take it. It's not personal. I go, he said I'm a fat fuck and he wants me right. to die a horrible death. <laughs> How is that not personal? Right. And right. I, but I get it now. It's not because they don't know me. And it's you not about you. That. It's about it would be personal. It wouldn't be. Well, because that's about me and not about you. What I'm saying is, but it's a hard fucking thing that, to recognize. Right, it's a hard thing to recognize. All right, but it's like, you know, with you say like like now with with people like where I'm at, there's certain things that I can do. Like even the bonfire. Like when Jay was like, "Would you do this with me?" This is way before it was even real. I said, like, fuck, yeah, I'll fucking do it. Let's have fun. Like, yeah, I'll do it. And when it was going down, I was like, listen, man, Dan, you should, you should stay. Right. It's a good gig, dude. Stay. You're great. You're awesome. Right. All right, I'm not. All right, dude, I'll do it. You know what I mean? The, even the Dennis Leary thing. I used to be so afraid. I don't, I'm not afraid of it. It's terrifying. There's anxiety. Sure. But in the reality of it, it's like, dude, it doesn't matter. If I bomb and they never ask me to do it again because I, it's fine. Right. If I kill, it doesn't matter. I've annihilated. Might- I've annihilated on that thing, and it hasn't changed my career right. whatsoever. And also, you might kill and they never ask you to do it again. Uh, so it's got nothing exactly. to do with you. Nothing to do. So that's really that's really the whole thing, and it's it's appreciating. You know, I want, but I want yeah, to, but wait, I, how did Taste Bud start? Was that what you I want to know, me? yeah, I want to know, because, look, I know you. You're my friend. I know the circles you run in, but you were running in some parallel group that I didn't even really know. You know what I mean? Like, who? Look, I knew Jay, I knew you, I knew Soto, sure. Gomez, blah, blah, blah. But then there was, you know, when you talk about, you know, like Chrissy D and, and Sal, and mm-hmm. there's this whole other group over there. Uh, that I didn't really, I never, I never knew. Well, I became tight. I only became, I mean, I was friends with Chris, but I only became tight with Chris because of Sal. When Sal and I said, let's do taste buds, how did you meet Sal? That's a funny, well, it's kind of a funny story, but I had a show. Okay. I had a weekly show in LA called Creep Show. Uh, and me and, uh, it was me and Dan St. Germain originally, and then Dan didn't didn't do it because we got into a fight. Because <laughs> your ego. He's still my friend, right. but we got into a fight. So Dan left, and then it was just me, and then we had these two producers, and they were great. And the producer one day said, we already had the lineup book for that night, and, and at the last minute, she was like, oh, my God, Joe, Sal Volcano's in town, and he wants to do a spot. And I was like, who, who is Sal Volcano? And she goes... He's from Impractical Jokers. We have to put him on. Impractical Jokers. We have to put him on. We have to put him on. So then again, my ego. I'm like, fuck, fucking Practical Joker. What the fuck show is that? I don't. I don't watch that show. Right. I gotta fucking. I gotta put this guy on my fucking show because the producer. You know what I mean? And I was like, fine, put him on. But I was like annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> and then he he came in. He was the nicest fucking he's the guy nicest. on earth. It's almost. It's. I feel like he's faking it. Yeah, and then and then he went. That's up, how nice he is. And he goes, "This this also got me." He goes, "Dude, it's so nice to meet you. I'm such a big O and A fan." <laughs> and I was like, yeah, "This guy's all right." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he went on, and he was really funny, and he killed. And then we were talking after the show, and I just we just had this nice rapport. And I go, "Dude, what are you doing?" And he goes, "Nothing." And I go, "Let's go across the street and get drunk." We always go to Jay's bar after the show. And he's like, okay. So we went, and we did. And we had a great fucking time. And then I didn't see him again. And then I ran into him at a festival called Outside Lands. And uh, we were at a party. And uh, we were, they had free shots. We were standing at the bar. I'm like, come on, let's go, dude. And he goes, oh, you motherfucker. Last time I saw you, you made me do all these shots. And I'm like, well, you're not getting off tonight. Let's go. Let's fucking drink. I remember that same night I became friends with Trevor Moore, who became one of my very close friends until he passed, very sadly. Uh, uh, I miss that fucking guy a lot. But uh, but uh, he was the best. Anyway, so Sal, 
that was it. Like that was kind of what my bond with Sal was. That that we had these two nights, and right. I knew that he was friends with Jay. And that was kind of that. And then when I moved back to New York, or was starting to not, I hadn't moved back. I got I, I was renting a room with Irene Morales in Brooklyn in Bushwick, and I was just going back and forth from LA to to New York, thinking about maybe I was going to move back. I would just see him at stuff, and we were buddies, and that was it. We had a good bond. I liked him, but that was kind of that. And then I remember Al Jackson was supposed to do the Joker's Cruise, and he called me, and he goes, fuck, dude, I got to pull out of the Joker's Cruise. I feel really bad. Do you think Sal will get mad at me? And I go, I don't think so. He seems like a nice guy, and it sounds like he got a good reason, so whatever. And then, like, two days later, Sal texted me, and he goes, do you want to do the Joker's Cruise? I was like, oh, that's just because Al dropped out, I think. Right. And he was like... It literally made me the offer to text, and I go, yeah. And I went on the cruise, and on that cruise, we were backstage at something. I don't remember what it was, show what it was. And we started talking about cookies. And I was like, Chips Ahoy are my favorite cookies, like, like for store-bought cookies. And he's like, no, are you crazy? They stink. Oreos are better. And I go, Oreos fucking suck. And dude, we started we started arguing like legit, like arguing about cookies. And it got to the point we were screaming at each other. And at one point he goes, Get the fuck out of here and like stormed out of the room. Right. And I was like, I swear to God, I was like, Oh, I'm gonna be like good friends with this guy. <laughs> and that was it. We were just after that, like we bonded on that. We fucking bonded on that. And I remember I one night I texted him and I go. I go, Sal, I just realized that Chips Ahoy is a play on Ships Ahoy. I never realized that before. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he just wrote back, my balls are blown off. I've never realized it either. And I was like, what the fuck? So we just kept like weirdly bonding on that. And then um, COVID came. But we still, it, that was the thing, man. We still weren't like, we were friends, but it hadn't tipped into that. You know what I'm saying? What? Like what? Like you were friendly. We were boys, but we weren't like dogs yet. Hanging you know what out. I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't getting the invites to shit. We were just boys. Yeah, I still don't get those invites, but yes. I, I tell them not to. The, uh... <laughs> Do you? But uh, no. I mean, somebody's saying something. He loves you. He doesn't invite me to shit. Um, but like, and then I got I got invited to his wedding. No, I didn't. Uh... <laughs> Keep going. But there was still a thing, like, where we weren't, like, we were right there on, like, teetering on it. And yeah. It wasn't happening. Yeah. Fully. At least in my mind. I went to the, when they had their movie premiere, I went. Didn't go. Didn't get invited. <laughs> I did. I was didn't. there. I pulled them aside the movie premiere, and I go, look, I know we're buddies and everything. I go, let's, it, I needed to go a little further. You let's, said that? Yeah, I go, let's work some phone calls into the mix. What there there. the fuck? You were, you yeah. wanted to be friends. Yeah, cause I, cause we were, we haven't, we were having a great time, but I'm like, let's go, let's come on, like let's, let's I'll up. do that with a friend, like I'll, I'll push a friend, like, all right, we've been, we've been having late night meetups long enough, let's, I need a little more, you know, we're not getting any you, younger, you I need a them, commitment. You force a relationship, you little fucking queer. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's a so, queer. Uh, <laughs> Joe's a queer. Wow. What? I thought you evolved. I'm sorry. Uh, I did. I, so, I'm sorry you thought that way. I did not. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Gary. Did. Uh, Gary. Did. So anyway. Yeah. What when, did he say to that? When you said, listen, if a guy came up to me. He, like, said, laughed in my face about it. Did he? He was like, what, you're, are you a lunatic? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing to say, hey, I want this to go further. I said it in a funny way, but I was. I'm thinking of doing it but to I was Rogan. Kind of serious. I'm thinking of doing it to Rogan. Yeah. Yeah, I want to call Rogan. And be like, listen, man, I want this relationship. We need to. Start. We Do it. You might have a. You might have a hit podcast come out of it. Oh my god. <laughs> the, uh, I was thinking I needed a co-host. No, but I. But I. But anyway, this was what tipped us into like, like, you know. It was Jay. Jay and Ari and Sal hung out all the time. And then COVID was hitting and the hangs were getting smaller and smaller because there was all this stuff out there about like, this might get serious in a minute and we might lock down and all this stuff. 
And right before COVID, Jay was going to Sal's to hang out. And he goes, if you want, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm sure it'll be fine. But do you want to come? And I go, yeah, I'd love to, but don't make it weird. Yeah. And he's like, I don't, it'll be fine. So he, he was like, I'm going to bring DeRosa. And Sal was like, cool. And then COVID hit. And I, we were just, we were a COVID crew. Oh. And that's when it was like, we became like fucking family because of that. And then a year later. So it was you three. You four. Yeah, and Christine was there. Christine, Evidence. so yeah. you five. Yeah, so... Um, you don't have to add the girls. No, that's four. One, two, three, four. Four, four. Yeah, whatever it is. So anyway, so then a, a full year and change later, we were in Montauk. And it was still COVID, but you could take safe trips. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. I don't fucking remember what <laughs> we were doing. And we were, uh, and we were in the kitchen... One morning, making breakfast, and somebody, I think Ari had bought bagels, and I was, or no, I bought bagels, but I only bought cinnamon raisin and plain, Yeah. and Sal like came in, and he's like, what the fuck, who doesn't buy everything bagel? And I go, why the fuck would I have done that? And he goes, it's the best bagel. It's and not. I go, no, it's not, cinnamon raisin is, and we started fucking screaming at each other. It's again. egg, but go ahead. <sighs> it's egg or cheese, but go ahead. Egg? <laughs> Egg? Egg? <laughs> I've never even seen someone order that one. <laughs> it's the one that's always empty? No, it's not. Baba. It's the one that's always egg? full. Egg or cheese? Because you get a bagel and put an egg on it. Nah, dude. Egg bagel. Egg, the, the yellow egg bagel or the cheese bagel. Let is me tell the, you something. If you say, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You lost weight and you, you used to be beautiful. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about anymore with food. Egg. You, Bagel you have, is the best. You have said shit to me in the last year about food since you lost weight, where I'm just like, he's lost his edge. This is like when Miles Davis stopped doing heroin and the, the music sucked. You've lost your fucking edge. What are you talking about? I lost Egg my, bagel. I lost my fat edge? Yes. <laughs> it's uh, not everything. It's the <laughs> So... We argued literally. Cinnamon raisin is for women. Dude, cinnamon raisin with 100%. cream cheese and jelly. What? Cinnamon raisin with cream cheese and jelly is no. For joke. women and children. That is a, a, a female. I oh. Listen, I, I've gone, I go for bagels. I have a family. You know what bagel they you get? Didn't, I, I hear you know the way you just said that. You know, I hear the way you just said that, you, you know fucking what? dick. I I'm have saying, a family. Listen, <laughs> I, I'm saying, I don't, have to create, I don't have to create one with a guinea and a Jew uh, on fucking Long Island. Oh, I have, shit. And I go, honey, what bagel do you and Max want? Cinnamon raisin. Yeah. C- that's a girl bagel. I don't care. It's awesome. I'm just saying it's a girl bagel. A man bagel. You know what else is a girl thing? What? Pussy, and it's awesome. <laughs> I love pussy. I don't get that. I love that. cinnamon Reagan bagels. All right, there you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, we were just screaming at each other about bagels, and then I remember Ari did a post. We were fighting about it so much, Ari went on Twitter and did a poll. Which bagel is better? Who won? Everything. Uh, I think everything. Of course they did. And and Sal, in the middle of us arguing, goes, he goes, D- do you think this could be a podcast? Right. And I was like... Cha-ching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I peed a little bit. I was like, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> it was like when Louis said, I want to, should I do your special? Well, yes. <laughs> here's, yeah, here's what I wasn't accounting for when I, in my excitement, that the fans would hate my guts for the first year. <laughs> oh, my God. As I watched him and DeCefano store soar into the clouds together. Oh, and, then, and then finally the fans were like, DeRosa, I used to hate you. Now I like you. And I was it like, takes a yeah, minute. it takes they, a minute. They did that Here with Luis go. Gomez, too. I'm YKWD, dude. Every week I had people go, get him off. Bobby, I love the Y, <laughs> but I can't. Joe and Dan are awesome. And I was like, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. Go watch Lewis's special, by the way. It's on YouTube right now. Very funny. Uh, here's what I was going to say. It makes me mad. Anyway, that's how we started Taste Buds. And then he was also talking to Chris about starting a podcast. Mm-hmm. So we said, so I said, let's, instead of doing them separately. I wish Giannis knew that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Shot fired. I think he did. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was a joke. <laughs> Giannis <laughs> was, was at a wig store at the time. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Go ahead. No. Uh, I'm kidding, too. Um, but no, but. 
I said, why are we going to do them separately? Let's put them together. Let's like Wu-Tang Clan it and put these shows together on a YouTube channel. Yeah. And yeah. try to make it like a network. Yeah. And, uh, and that was it. And that's right. And then me and Chris were already friendly, but we, we got tight because of that. Right. You know? But anyway. Um, are you guys still in Staten Island with everything? No, no, no. We do it in the city. Oh, you got I'm a new studio? I'm back do it again, by the way. Huh? I fuck, dude, let me tell you something. I loved it. It's great. Yeah, please. I, I, uh... Oh, wait. You, you just did it, right? Didn't I, you no, just no, did I, it when I was... You, didn't you fill in when I, I was did gone? It. No, it was a year. It was a year ago. No. It was a year ago. Really? Well, maybe under a year, but not just recently. Seasons went by. No, we have a studio in the city now. Yeah, well, but, I did it in Staten Island. Okay. So that was then that while, was a while ago. That was a while ago. Yeah. But, um, um, oh, this is what I started saying a while ago. What makes me so mad, I'll still think about this and get angry. When you did the Yankee Swap episode yeah. and you told me to come down, yeah. that list the whole time kept going, what, what, what is he even doing here? Yeah, this, is, this is our thing. What is he doing? And I, yeah. I'm like, motherfucker, I was here at the beginning. Yeah, I know. And I know he just didn't know, but, but yeah. it was making me really mad. I love yeah. List, but it was love making list, me so mad. He knows how to get under your skin. <laughs> he knows how to stay. And he'd be like, oh, I was kidding. I don't know. He has no concept that he's say I got mad at him one time at the Paramount Theater. I, did, I was doing the Paramount. Where's the Paramount again? It's a, the theater. Is that the, Austin? It's a, no, it's in Long Island. Huntington. Oh, okay. It's like an amazing theater. It's like the best. <laughs> And I'm finally at the Paramount. I'm from the brokerage to the Paramount. And I put Dan and fucking Joe on the show. Mm -hmm. And I and I go out there and I show up and he's like, oh, well, hey, what's going on? Like, hey, your name's not even on the outside. They didn't even put your name. I'm like, dude, I'm at a fuck. I brought you to a, th I snapped. And they're in the green room, like the main green room. And they're sitting on the couches. Like I walked in, they didn't even, Scopo. Joe and Dan didn't even like get up when I walked in to like let me sit in my green room. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And he just, they just, Joe just started fucking with me. So I literally was like, what the fuck my e course again, ego. Right. I should be like, who, gives, who gives a fuck? And I, I went to the other, and I came back in. He goes, and he gave me another zing about, you know, like, oh, people, people showing up, or, you know. And I went, who the fuck? I snapped, dude. Fucking, you know me, right? Me and you yeah. are the same. Well, you're the same fucking. No, guy. I'm not saying I'm not. I oh. say that all the time, dude. I'm so bad. Like shit has happened at the bar, Oof. where I'm. I'll be with Paul before we have to handle something. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna go to fucking there, right? Fuck. And he's like, Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Calm down. And he'll he'll go. Joe, I've been where you are right now. Learn from my mistakes. Yeah, I know. Don't go in there like that right now. Just take a fucking breath. And I'm like, it's funny because you see it, you recognize, you see it in the other guy. You know it, you smell it on a guy that's got it in him. I know. I have questions for you. Are you ready? Uh, what? When did you start doing this? Oh, my God. <laughs> Ego, Joe. It's not ego. That's judgment. This is Those are two different things. <laughs> this is fans. These are oh, fans. Oh, oh, I thought you were doing like a... No, these are fans. This is a segment we like to call, you know... Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay, cool. This is the fans. Okay, cool. Hello, Joe. This is from Lou. Lou? Yeah. Hi, Lou. Hello, Joe. Playing Desert Island, what three albums from the 80s do you take? What? Playing Desert Island... Oh, I get it. Go ahead. What three albums? I know. Uh, well, yeah. I know one of them's. I know one of them's Frank Zappa. No, well, no, because his '80s albums aren't ones I would okay. take with me. All right. Uh, Run DMC, Raising Hell, without question. Really? Yeah. That hold up. That's my favorite rap album of all time. It's one of my favorite what albums song? of all time. What every song on it? Name is. one. Peter Piper. It's How's tricky. That this trick is a good one. Yeah. Uh, um, that's one from the 80s. Uh, uh, I think a lot of what I like is from the 70s, and then it, it's a big jump to the 90s. I'll just do all hip-hop albums. That album, uh, Ice-T. Uh, Cop Killer? 
if power is from the 80s, I'll take power. But if it's not, I'll take Ryan Pays. And then, um, and then uh, probably P- Public Enemy, uh, Nation of Millions. That's a good one. Yeah, it's all rap, but I, I mean, it's my three choices of rap, but I can't. I'm, I'm a, a lot of the bands I like. Well, there's a Motorhead record, I'm sure, in there somewhere, but I just can't remember which ones came out in the 80s. All right, anyway, let's go. Sorry. That's good. That was a good one. Uh, what is your favorite Joey Rose's sandwich? Uh, well, the local, uh, it, which is, which is, it, I love the local. It never to me. It never. It's a big seller, but to me, it never sounds that exciting when I describe it. But it? it just works. It's turkey, roast beef, white American cheese, mayo, tomato, onion, hot cherry peppers, salt, pepper, oregano, and it just. It's just an amazing sandwich. It's a sandwich I used to get when I was a kid from a local pizzeria, and I. And that's why they had a turkey roast beef hoagie, and I did this version of it. That's called the local because, like, that's how I would order that hoagie. What's the condiment on it? Tomatoes, onions, and hot cherry peppers. There's no oil. There's no mayonnaise. There's no, no mayonnaise. Yeah, I said oh, mayonnaise. Oh, mayonnaise. condiment. Sorry, mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah mayonnaise. Okay, so yeah. mayonnaise. That sounds good. Uh, uh, just hot cherry peppers against mayonnaise is like you're not it really works. You're not a um. And don't please don't take offense to this. I don't know how to say it correctly. You're not a giving sandwich owner operator how do you mean like the guy from um the cheesesteak place from um what's the one in in philly pat's no or gino's gino's gino used to just show up at the stress fa- wherever yeah. with a bag of steak and yeah. cheese yeah you've never just shot like tonight you're coming on my pot hang on let me finish before you fucking you're coming on it's like It'd be like, wow. Hey. Right, does, the, does the guy with the second most famous cheesesteak place on planet Earth for 55 fucking years, oh, he shows up with three free steaks? So a bunch of comics will like him? Oh, sorry. Sorry that I'm, sorry I'm not able to do that in the first two years of my business. You know what? You cocksuckers aren't giving fucking friends. I'd like to see your asses down there buying a sandwich, supporting your buddy's shop once in a I, while. I bought it. All right. I bought my sandwiches. Okay. Remember? And I've given you sandwiches. You've never Remember? given me one. Yes, I did. You gave that yes, fucking did. cripple Keith one. Yeah, I gave you. You didn't give sandwiches. me one. You no, you didn't. Fuckers. I paid. <laughs> I paid twice. I gave you some sandwiches. Deuce, I paid. You know, you know, I've got a point here. That 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 little prick at Gino's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's I a like nice him. guy. A I like guy. him a lot. He's, he's a great guy. I think he's, he's a great guy. I'm just saying. Stop liking me. He used to show up at all my shows. Never, co- never seen him again. Yeah, you know why? Because you never went to his place. I did. He took. I sat in the back. He took my. He put my picture up on the thing. Well, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but yeah, I do think it's cool that he shows up with sandwiches. He does. Yeah. You can do that after your business is a smash hit for buddy, 50 years. Buddy, you're talking a fucking roast beef and a turkey. We're not talking filet mignon. You could have showed up with a fucking local. <laughs> you could have said, Bobby, I brought you a sandwich. Yeah, so you want me, aside from paying for Uber's round trip, coming over here to do I'm this. I'm paying for you, you want me also, I pay for you, Uber. Since when do you do that? Tonight. Oh, really? Yeah, we pay. You, not if I hadn't have said that. 100%. And let's be honest. <laughs> uh, I'll say it to every one of you fuckers. <laughs> uh, All right, here we go. Yeah, go ahead. What is this one? Uh, that was from Weems. Julia Kinlaw. Great name. What are what are his favorite shoulder exercises? <laughs> Actually, I can tell you. Uh, it's the... Uh, I've been doing uh, dips. Yeah. And, uh, and with the dumbbells. I don't do these enough, but this... Whoosh, whoosh, yeah. Whoosh, whoosh, yeah. Whoosh, whoosh, or yeah. then you do that, whatever. That one. Okay, cool. That's a good one. Sloppy Joseph, are you excited for the show at the uh, Avenel Performing Arts Center in Avenel, New Jersey, on Saturday, September sixteenth? I am. Why yeah. are you laughing? Why? Yeah, what's so funny? What's funny? 
Danny, what's funny? <laughs> it just, it very much feels, the guy's name is Sloppy. It does look like you, you're asking yourself a question. Oh, 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 oh. and then I'm plugging it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, I am very excited about that show. Please come out if you're Lewis. plugging at the end. Lewis. Gomez? No, has a special, YouTube. Go check it out. Lewis, will you have a drumming competition with Bobby? Yes. I think you're a better drummer than me. Well, I played like pretty seriously for a while. I did not. But I, I'm not. I, I played on TV for a minute, but I would do it. Yeah, I would do it. I, honestly, I haven't played in so long. I couldn't even tell you. Like you're good. I, guess I remember like you and Billy used to do it. But you and Billy remember you and Billy had a hit podcast. You had a radio show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Lewis, this is from Lewis again. You and Bobby are in the woods being hunted by a serial killer. Who survives? Me. Yeah, I can't Me. even. Me. He can't tried to argue, argue about bagels with the asshole. Uh, I can't argue that. You would survive. A hundred fucking percent. I, I can't argue I would that. probably save you. I don't think you would. I think you'd run for your own life. I would not. I would, hundred, I would fucking save you. You no, know I would. I actually think you would. But yes. yeah, I can't even argue that. I'm no. a, I'm an anxiety ridden, panicky. <laughs> yeah. I also, I also you don't probably see... judge him on how he's killing people. <laughs> That's not what a serial killer does. <laughs> I also that know, knife is not a good knife to kill people. I'm not like one of these like see it through guys. So I I definitely would be like. I'm not running anymore. Just whatever. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Just go. Yeah. It's just uh -huh. Boring. Kill me. You you'd you'd actually you'd <laughs> argue him to not kill you. I probably wouldn't even argue. I'd be like, just do it if you're gonna do it. He'd be like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to just kill you. I want you to not want to die. Like, All right. Well, I'm not doing it. So what do you want to do now? I guess leave <laughs> and go find that used to be fat guy that ran away. All right. Go look for him. Okay. <laughs> I'm Are going you, home. You really would annoy a serial killer out of fucking <laughs> killing you. Oh, that's funny. Listen, brother. Um, Wait, I had the story for the end, remember? I'm, I'm going to tell you that oh, right I'm now. Oh, I'm sorry. But I want you to get your plugs in real quick. Uh, so so I'm touring. This is one of the biggest, the biggest tour I've ever gone on. And we're adding dates all the time. And I'm going into these new venues. I'm very excited. But here we go. I got Avenal, New Jersey, September 16th. Avenal Performing Arts Center. Toronto, Ontario for JFL, 21st through September 23rd. I'll be at Skankfest, of course, in Las Vegas. New York, Arlene's Grocery, October 28th. That's with my band, Salsa Windfall. That's the only music show on the whole run, but that's going to be a lot of fun, that show. I might come to that. That's going to be really fun, man. That's a big Halloween bash. We got Esoteric. Do I get, do I get to buy tickets, or are you going to you gonna get me? Yeah, maybe. Okay. No, no, just come. I'll put you on the damn list. All, all right? right, well, I mean, I got to beg. <laughs> uh, well, we got Esoteric and 7 l from Zarface coming down, and it's We'll see you in hell live. My horror podcast is doing a thing. That's going to be a fun show. Anyway, uh, stand-up shows uh, November 11th, Philadelphia, PA, Theater of the Living Arts. Well, that sounds cool. Where's that? On South Street. Love it. November 17th, Pittsburgh, PA, Bottle Rocket, Social Hall, Buffalo, New York on November 18th, Theater at Seneca One, uh, Denver, Colorado at the Summit, November 30th, Phoenix, Arizona at the Crescent Ballroom, December 1st, and December 3rd. Third at the Soundwell in Salt Lake City. We're adding shows all now, the time. Now, who's booking these alternative venues? My my team. What's that? Like, well, you know, my manager Emilio has a has a oh, really. I love Emilio. He's great. He's got a wonderful crew of people, and they. I'm with I'm with them. I don't have an agency. They're my managers, and they do everything, That's and great. they're fucking awesome. Good. Um, they're really great. So so I'm excited, man. I'm out. A great club in fucking Connecticut, dude. Uh, oh, yeah, that oh club's great. Oh, my God, that club is fucking great. That club's great. And yeah. I'm doing my new hour, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. It's very themed. I'm very proud of it. It's the best thing I've ever written. So uh, I hope you can come out and see it, people. Tickets at joedarosa.com. All show right, it. now, uh, and go to robertkellylive.com for all my stuff. I'm going to be all over the place. I got a tour coming up now, too. I'm going to be at Skank Fest with him. Rutherford, New Jersey. Phoenix, Arizona next week, I think. Uh, Rochester. Uh, Madison at Comedy on State, the best club ever, one of them. Uh, I just had to reschedule um, uh, the uh, Rhode Island Comedy Connection to January because of uh, the uh, uh, Dennis Leary uh, Comics Come Home thing. But I'm all over the place. 
look at that. Asbury Park. I got Pottstown, PA, everything. Boston. Nice. There you go. So, uh, so check that out. Check out my dates. And, of course, check out. Uh, I want to hear the story. Yeah, well, let me hear. Go ahead. Plug, guys. Quick. Go. Uh, Max Marcus Comedy, all social media. The Cheese Show on YouTube. Uh, at Danny Braff on Instagram. You should go on The Cheese Show with Joe, uh, Joe Russell. Sure. Um, so anyways, what is the story at the end? Tell me the story. Well, we were talking about people that look out for you, how much money means, mm -hmm. right? I don't think I've ever told this story on this podcast. Uh, how much a little bit of money means in those formidable years and all that stuff. Yeah. Do you remember when I was broke and I said, can I bum a cigarette from you? And then I said, can I bum a second cigarette from you? And you said, do you not have money for cigarettes? And I said, no, nah, dude, it's who, who the fuck has money for cigarettes? And you pulled me down the stairs, not pulled me, but took me down the stairs at the uh, Comedy Cellar, and you gave me $60, and you said, take this, get some smokes, have some food money, yeah. da 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 Yeah. Meant the fucking world to me, dude. Meant the world to me. Yeah. And I guess it was either later that year or whatever at Chris, the, the Steinberg's Christmas party. Mm -hmm. yeah. I pulled you aside and I said, I have something for you. And I tried to give you $60 because yeah. I was finally making some money. Mm -hmm. And you said, no, you give that to somebody else. Yeah. And you didn't take it. Yeah. And then a year after that, I was standing in front of Stand Up New York with Dan Soder. And Soder didn't have money for cigarettes. And I gave him 40 bucks. And I said, get some cigarettes and whatever else you need. Right. And, uh, and then he later said, I want to pay you back. And I said, no, no, no. You pass it along. And I told him the story. Are you doing that for me? So. There you go. See what you did? Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Do you remember that time you brought me one of the sandwiches from your shop? <laughs> you, you ruin everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love that story. I do remember that now. I do remember that. And did Dan Soda, we got to find out, did Dan ever do that to somebody else? No. <laughs> he went and gave 40 hours to a voice coach to learn how to do a fucking Hungarian dialect <laughs> or stupid radio voices. <laughs> he stinks. <laughs> he I left, regret giving him the money. <laughs> then, he left, then he left Jay hanging with me. <laughs> I really regret giving him that money. Buddy, I love you so much. Love you, buddy. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah, anytime. And, and uh, this has been a great episode, man. I fucking Thank love guys. it. Uh, this has been another episode. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, just hit the subscribe button. Stop fucking around. Don't watch all the way to now and not hit subscribe. That makes you a loser. <laughs> and hit the like button. Comment. Uh, and if you guys want to see somebody else on the show, let us know. But I hope you like the show. We'll see you guys next week on You Know What, Dude podcast. You've been listening to the YKWD podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.